The Oregon Ducks have made their statement in the college football postseason. But the Miami Hurricanes can win the national championship of college football tonight if they can beat the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Or Nebraska could win it. The Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T. Miami and Nebraska have met in five bowl games. The most memorable, 1984. Miami won its first of four national championships, beating Nebraska 31-30 when the Cornhuskers went for two to win and failed. 1995, the national championship went to the Cornhuskers, scoring 15 points in the final period to beat the Hurricanes 24-17, the first of three national titles for the Huskers in the 90s. The national championship stage is not intimidating for either team. On-field leadership well-tested and proven. Miami quarterback Ken Dorsey accorded the Maxwell Award, the third Canes quarterback to win that award. Nebraska quarterback Eric Crouch was voted the Heisman Trophy, the third Cornhusker to win that award. Nope, it's not the usual Big Ten, Pac-10 Rose Bowl. This one is for the national championship of college football. The sunset is the same. The San Gabriel Mountains still ring the Rose Bowl of the city of Pasadena. The Chardonnay and the Cabernet have flowed. Music and laughter has been plentiful. But there are differences in this Rose Bowl game. It is the end of the first cycle of the Bowl Championship Series. And there has been controversy about Nebraska getting the ticket to meet unbeaten Miami in this championship game. And it's a happy new year from Pasadena, everybody. Happy to have you with us for the Bowl Championship Series championship game. Both teams come in with something to prove. Nebraska has been picked on, they feel. People criticizing in the wake of their loss to Colorado. They are up to here with it. But, Tim Brent, the Miami Hurricanes have something to prove, and it's left over from last year. Uh, partner, you're absolutely right. They were left out of this mix last year. They felt like they had to win every game to erase all doubt. They did that. They ran the table 11-0. They know a win tonight, and all that talk about the BCS and all that talk about a split national championship, that's a moot point. They've got speed. They've got talent. They know if they win tonight, they control all the scenarios. They'll be one and only champion, and that'll be Miami. Now, let us go to the field. John Saunders, Terry Bowden, and the Ford pregame report. Well, Keith, you're not looking at the two newest members of the Cornhusker marching band. It just looks that way. And, Terry, there's a bunch of storylines in this game. One involves Larry Coker, head coach of Miami, looking to become just the second coach in college football history to win a national championship as a rookie. Last time that happened, 1948, Benny Oostervon at Michigan. 1948, that's the year Larry Coker was born. John, before the season began, I felt that Miami's biggest question mark was new head coach Larry Coker. Would he know how to act like a head coach, how to handle the staff, how to handle the players, how to handle the game plan? He had a million chances to mess up, but he was phenomenal. Frank Solich, on the other hand, is in his fourth season at Nebraska. But remember, Tom Osborne took two decades to win his first national championship. You told me earlier this week as a head coach, you don't like the month off between the end of the season and this game. But if there is one positive, you get to learn everything there is to learn about your opponent. Here's our scouting reports. I'm Eric Krause, the quarterback at Nebraska, and here's my scouting report. Miami has been a team that has thrived off turnovers and uh, made a lot of points off them, so we've got to make sure that uh, we take care of the football. Miami has a really good offense, as they've proven all year, um, being able to beat up a lot of teams that are ranked really high. They've got a great throwing quarterback in Dorsey, of course, and an offensive line uh, by many uh, that is considered to be the best offensive line. Uh, in the country. Miami has a couple of weaknesses that I think we'll try to lean on a little bit. You know, they're not really too high up there against the run. And you know, that's what we do best. We run the football. That's what we're going That's what we're going to stick with. That's what we've always preached. Uh, that's how we play. That's how we feel. Uh, we can win this game. I'm Larry Coker, head football coach at the University of Miami Hurricanes, and here's my scouting report on the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Well, Eric Crouch is a running back, linebacker, and a quarterback's body. He is the, I would say, the centerpiece of the offense. He's like Superman on the Nebraska team. We're going to try to keep hitting him, keep hitting him whenever we get a chance. They got a great defense, and I think we, we just have to find uh, matchups in our favor. We take our hats off to Nebraska because we know they're a good team. I feel like they're going to come with their best, you know, and, and we're going to come with ours. 
Everyone knows Nebraska runs the ball well, and Miami struggles against the run. Time of possession will be huge. Nebraska needs to do what Nebraska does well. They must have early success running the football. If they do that, they set the tempo, and they keep Miami's offense off the field. It's the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. There's Regis Philbin, the Grand Marshal of the 113th Tournament of Roses. And Carolyn Shu, the Rose Bowl is coming up. The Ford Free Game Report, brought to you by Ford Trucks. The best selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Welcome back to the Ford pregame report. These two teams have been here about 10 days. All business tonight, but they've had a chance to enjoy Southern California. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today as we officially welcome the Miami Hurricanes and the Nebraska Cornhuskers to Disney's California Adventure. Okay, Dad. Surf's up. Oh, my God. Which of the following college football players won the 2001 Heisman Trophy? No help. Final answer? Heisman Trophy winner. Bye, Hurricane. <laughs> I love these guys. Rose Bowl prediction. Is there any other? Miami, of course. Gotta go with Miami. <laughs> well, the Hollywood stars may be picking the Canes, but they're not here in the Rose Bowl. There's an awful lot of red. Right now, up to the man who'll call the game, Keith Jackson. John, thanks very much. As we begin another year, all hopes are to enjoy a time of peace. Now let us join Jubilant Sykes as he sings God Bless America. Mr. Jubilant Sykes. Now let's stay in the field with our colleague Todd Harris. Well, Keith, to say that Nebraska has a strong and proud tradition in football is an understatement. Tonight they will be playing for the fifth time for the national championship in only nine years. But Husker Nation has taken a beating since their loss to Colorado. That loss weighs heaviest on the black shirt defense and defensive coordinator Craig Bull. 
He has had the number 62 written on his office billboard for the last 41 days. Now it has been an extremely long time since the Cornhuskers have played, but tonight when they run onto the field with a chance to win the national championship, motivation will not be a problem. Keith. All right, Todd, thanks very much. Well, we're happy to report that the paragliders worked well. And now here come the Nebraska Cornhuskers into the Rose Bowl. These Cornhuskers have five national championships. They've played in 33 consecutive postseason bowl games. They're 11 and 1 in the season pass and got here by less than a point in the BCS Bowl. But they are here, and their necks are both. of college football. The Canes have won four national championships and are still miffed they didn't get to play in the big game last year. Now, let's join Lynn Swan, who joins our broadcast crew today. Swanee? Well, everyone expected Miami to be here in 2002, and we know it was their record in 2001 that got them here. Miami believes it was in September of 2000 that their journey began. 21 consecutive wins for them to get here in that time. They only lost two halves of football. Now, don't be deceived by defensive backs that can get out there and steal the ball. Or if guys are so fast, I think warp speed is cruise control. What got them here was character and discipline. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to honor America, please stand and join award-winning Electra recording artist Yolanda Adams in singing our national anthem. At the conclusion of the anthem, please direct your attention to the north end of the stadium to welcome a squadron of U.S. Navy F-18 jets in the flyover to salute America and the great tradition of the Rose Bowl. by Ford Trucks. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Ladies and gentlemen, please note the center of the field. 
The team captains, the game officials from the Atlantic Coast Conference, joined by Grand Marshal Regis Philbin and the president of the Tournament of Roses, Mr. Ron Oakham, for the flip of the coin. Regis will do the flipping. Here is game referee Courtney Mosey. Let me show you, captains. This is the 2002 National Championship Rose Bowl game coin. University of Miami logo on one side, University of Nebraska logo on the other side. We're going to ask Regis to flip the coin. Whichever logo comes up will win the toss. Okay? Regis, coin. You'll flip it. We'll let it hit the ground. Nebraska wins the toss. Defer, defer. Nebraska wins the toss. They will defer to the second half. Get the ball. Right, which end you want to kick from? All right, turn your back this way, please. We'll go this way, man. Miami will receive. Shake hands, man. Have a good ball game. Miami gets the football first. Let's do some X's and O's to start with the quarterbacks. Well, you've got to start with the quarterbacks, Keith, because they are, in fact, the headliners here. You've got the Heisman Trophy winner, the Maxwell Award winner, and when you talk about these two guys, they're almost opposites. Eric Crouch, number seven, he's the runner. Of course, Ken Dorsey, number 11, he's the passer. What makes this matchup so intriguing is that they are opposites in so many ways. Crouch, very athletic, instinctive. He reads on the run, and he cuts at full speed. Dorsey is the passer, and I mean he prepares. A preparation guy, watches tape, reads the game plans. He sees the whole field, throws in rhythm, very rarely gets sacked. Now, the similarities are the intangibles. Both, we know, are very, very talented guys. Both are leaders, and both are winners. Something has to give tonight. Well, all the talk is about Nebraska's defense, and Miami's got the ball first. Well, that's the biggest question mark here tonight is the Nebraska defense that gave up 62 points against Colorado. So how do they stop Miami? Well, they're going to do some things that they haven't done all year. The undersized defensive line is going to move around. They're going to put nine guys in the box, cheat the safeties up, and they're going to blitz Dorsey like crazy, try to put some pressure on him. Nobody's been able to do that. And then you've got Craver and Kroos, and those guys are going to be out on the corners, locked on, pressing man-to-man -man defense and pressuring the wide receivers. Nobody's been able to do that all year. An aggressive game plan. They're taking some chances. How successful it is will determine the national championship. All right, let's go to Todd Harris now with the Husker coach, Frank Solich. Thank you, Keith. Coach, one question for you. 41 days is a long layoff. What's the mood of the team? Yeah, great spirits. They practice and prepared very hard. Uh, they've got a great attitude. They're ready to play some great football. They've been waiting for this game for quite a while now. All right, good luck, Coach. Thanks a lot, Todd. Let's go over to Lynn Swan. Thank you very much, Todd. We know the adrenaline's running high, but you've got a starting fullback out, a linebacker out. Does that affect how you operate the team this evening? Man, it's not. We're going to run our offense. We're not going to change a lot. We have quality people there. they play. played. Willis McGahey, Jared Payton. We'll be fine there. We'll just have to get uh, get our feet on the ground. We just don't have quite the experience that we have with Najee Davenport. Coach, thank you. Good luck tonight. All right, thanks, man. Keith? All right, the first quarter scoring is quite a story about these two teams. Miami has outscored the opposition 95 to 20 in the first period, while Nebraska has only scored three points in the first quarter of the last four games. And Miami will have the ball. So we'll see what happens. This is a different season. This one is for the national championship of college football. Josh Brown will kick it off. Andre Johnson and Frank Gore are waiting for it. Johnson is number five. Gore is number 32 for Miami. The game is on. Two yards deep in the end zone. Johnson looking for the outside. Taken down at the six-yard line on a diving tackle. The Huskers cover it well. Keith, what's interesting here is Nebraska, which wants to keep Dorsey and the offense off the field all night, deferred. But the reason Frank Solich did that is he says they've done it all year. They're going to do it tonight in the championship. Ken Dorsey comes out for the first snap. Those are the numbers on his season. He has 23 touchdowns. He's been picked nine times. He is 25 and one as a starter. He is from Orinda, California. Jeremy Shockey and Robert Williams come out as wide 
And Shockey is a tight end. He's a huge target. And he's all over the place. And they run it up the middle with uh, Fortis. Clinton Fortis. And he takes it quickly out across the 10 to the 11-yard line for a five-yard pickup. The AT&T starting lineup for the backs and receivers. There's Fortis. As Shockey. Shockey is a great big go-to guy for the receiving core. McGahee is starting for the injured Davenport at fullback. The offensive front. Bryant McKinney is 6'9", 340 pounds. The other tackle, Joaquin Gonzalez, almost as big. Not quite, but almost. Now here's your second snap of the ball game on second down and five for the Miami Hurricanes. They're going to put it in the air. They go down the middle with it. And the pass is caught by Shockey, the big tight end. And he's got a first down out at the 32-yard line. Man coverage, they're having trouble with it. Dorsey's got to be chomping at the bit to see it. Chanley is going to be head up on Shockey all night. They don't want to bump him off the line of scrimmage. But that time he got by Shanley. He cleared. And Dorsey, with no trouble at all and plenty of time to throw, picked up his tight end. First down for the Kings. They go to the eye. And the officials stop it for just a moment. Keith, this I'm is a, a quick strike offense. The average drive time on Miami's 49 offensive touchdowns this year is two minutes and five seconds. We've got a knot in the chain. That's the problem. Courtney Mosey, we told you, was the referee. I had that problem this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're ready to go. First down for the Canes out on the 32-yard line. Ball is given to Portis. Von Greg about to the outside. He's got very quick feet in traffic, but the Huskers cover him in a hurry. It's Willie Amos who got burned on the last play who makes the tackle on this one. Here's the Nebraska defense for you now. Chris Kelsey and Des Moines Adams. Adams is the rush in, and he's the guy that's got to run into McKinney first off. The two tackles inside need to put some heat on so these linebackers can get to them in a hurry. They're very quick. Chandler's got a big job tonight. The corners, Craver and Gross, well, they have a major job to do tonight against the Swift Hurricane receiver. Second down and 10. Dorsey back, flings it over to the left side. The ball is thrown high, intended for Darrell Jones. It is incomplete. Keith, when you're in man coverage, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. And that time, a lot of pressure on Dorsey and also the man coverage. Everybody was covered. Great pursuit and coverage that time by Dewan Gross, who played him inside out and really had his back to the ball. And Dorsey has only been sacked uh, four times in 318 pass attempts this season. That'll tell you something about that offensive front. That'll be one of the big tests tonight because Nebraska thinks they can get to it. That is Shockey, the big tight end, working in the backfield. And Dorsey getting some heat, gets his ball away, and it is out of bounds incomplete. You've got to make him run if they can make him run and get in his face. And they got in his face that time. It was Shanley and Slechta. Rather than taking guys head on, Craig Bowl, the defensive coordinator, said, hey, look, we were blown out and overpowered by Colorado. This is a better offensive line. So we're going to play them on the edge, and we're going to shoot those gaps. Slechta that time almost had Dorsey. Freddie Capshaw is in to do the punting. He's a three-stepper. Ball is away. It's going to hang up there a little bit, but Gross, Gross takes it. No fair catch. He's tackled after a two-yard return. He'll put it on the 34-yard line, where it'll be first down for the Crestblunt Cornhuskers in their opening possession of the ball game. A 38-yard punt and a three-yard return. Cornhuskers for their first offensive possession. Quarterback Eric Trotz, the numbers on his season. He's a runner. He's a, actually a triple threader in the old terms. He's thrown seven touchdown passes, been intercepted ten times, and those interceptions in the main thrown while running, sometimes for his life. Right in, Wistrom goes in motion, turns, gives the ball off to the fullback. Davis and Judd Davis bangs in there for a couple of yards. Let's check the AT&T starting lineup now for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Darren Diedrich is the banger at tailback. Tracy Westrom among the receivers. The tight end is the go-to guy. He caught 24 passes this season. And here's your offensive front. Tony Ufanoti is a 340-pounder. The Cornhuskers don't come in very small, but at 304-pound average, they were the smallest offensive line in the Big 12 this season. 
Ball is handed off to Diedrich, the tailback. He's a young man out of Ontario, Canada. And he'll get it up to about the 37-yard line. And they'll be looking at third down and long. And the Miami defense is licking its chops. McDougal and Green from the in position are very good. Joseph and Walters are just big, strong guys in the middle. The linebackers are very fast. If the big guys get a draw up front, these guys wreak havoc. They're without, however, one of their starters. Philip Buchanan and Mike Rump for your corners. When you look for the football tonight on defense for Miami, you'll find number 20, Edward Reed. He's always around the ball. Crouch, quick drop, takes off up the middle and quick recovery by Andrew Williams. Andre Williams stayed home, and suddenly there was a quarterback right in his sights, and he took him down. It'll be punting time, so both teams will have to punt on their first possession. Looked like Williams was spying him. It looked like they told him to stay there. Watch the middle on the draw. When Nebraska passes, they only go to four guys. 90% of their passes have gone to four guys, and they run Crouch on the draw more times than not. So they had him stay in the middle. They had him spy him. No secret there. Took him down. Great defensive play by Miami, the best defense in the nation. Philip Buchanan is waiting for the punt from Kyle Larson. The kick is away, and it's a beauty. Runs him all the way back to the nine-yard line. Almost slipped and fell, but now he gets going upfield, and he found the hole. And he's across the 30. And he's out there near the 32-yard line before Larson, the punter, makes the tackle. He almost went home with that one. Let's take a look at the Blackhawk down game solutions. It'll tell you what to expect in the ball game. No turnovers in any football game. Even it's Pop Warner, but it's magnified in a championship game. Miami's got to get everybody involved. They've got to get the receivers. They're a 50-50 team. They've got to get Portis running the ball. They've got to be able to stop the option defensively. Nebraska, stop the run, pressure Dorsey, and they've got to have success offensively to keep Dorsey on the sidelines. Dorsey throwing a little swing to the outside, and it bounces off the arms of Clinton Portis, the tailback. That was a 55-yard punt a moment ago by uh, Kyle Larson but returned 23 yards by Buchanan that's pretty good stuff both these quarterbacks in a championship game I don't care how good or experienced they are they've got to settle down you know emotion sometimes gets in the way of concentration they've got to get refocused get everybody in the ball game and get in the rhythm Everybody sky high probably until the first quarter is over. Then we'll just hunker down and have at it. That play's going no place as Nebraska ate him up. He lost his footing as he tried to plant and come back. Portis is very good in traffic. He picks his spots nicely. But Des Moines Adams got away from uh, McKinney that time and uh, made the tackle. While you watch this replay, Keith, I have to tell you, I think the nation has been fooled by that Colorado game because this defense is quick. It's not big. But it does do a lot of things. I mean, they slant, they shoot gaps, they stem, they blitz. The linebackers are active, and they've got great corners. Third down and 13 for the Hurricanes. They go to the shotgun formation. Dorsey gets it off down the middle, and it is caught. They go to the big guy again, Jeremy Shockey. He is 6'6", 246 pounds. He's a junior, and he is from Ada, Oklahoma. Keith, their tight end's getting off the line of scrimmage too freely. Here he is. They're splitting him just a little bit, and he's taking that middle. They're running too deep. They're running man on the outside. He's got to be hit off that line of scrimmage, and then Booker, the safety, 14, has got to get over there quicker. He's looking for the hit, not looking for the ball. Had he broken quicker, he would have had an interception. For the first time tonight, Miami is on the Nebraska side of the field at the Husker 49-yard line. Dorsey has a lot of time and throws it down the middle, and the pass is incomplete. Chucky has been running loose. He has not been contested coming off the snap of the ball. No, and that's something that they told me they were going to hit him every single play and be head up on it. But we haven't seen that yet, and Chucky's had success. And I'll tell you something about Chucky. Down there in Miami's practice and watching him time after time, Keith, he's a wide receiver in a tight end's body. And they use him so effectively. They'll use him tight. They'll split him. They'll kind of flex him like we just saw, and they'll even put him wide. Second down and ten. This is Portis. And number 98 got a piece of him as he went by. Des Moines Adams is going to get his third tackle in the ballgame. 
You know, so far, Nebraska has been able to stop the run of Fortis. And that's what they're trying to do with nine in the box. And they feel like they'll eventually get an interception with their corners because they can do the man to man coverage. It's the safety that's going to give them a problem. And if they don't hit Shockey off the line of scrimmage, he'll pick them apart. First and ten is brought to you tonight by Monster.com. Passes away and it's picked. Intercepted by Keo Kramer. Dorsey tried to force it. There were people in his face. Scott Shenley was the main man on the play. And they picked Dorsey. What we were just talking about. You get nine in the box, you run the blitz, you get pressure on Dorsey. The corners will get the pick. Here comes the blitz. That puts pressure on Dorsey. He throws it before he's ready. And there is the pick. And it's Keo Craver. And folks, he is as good as it gets when you talk about a cornerback. The Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by AT&T Long Distance. Nothing else has the power of your voice. Honda, a versatile family of cars, minivans, and SUVs. FedEx, Ground, International, Online, or Express. Don't worry, there's a FedEx for that. Beachwood Age Budweiser, with the crisp, clean, and refreshing taste known only to the king of beers. And Charles Schwab, expert advice that's objective, uncomplicated, and not driven by commission. Okay, here we go with Nebraska's second possession at 8.59 to go in the first quarter after the interception of Dorsey. Interception by Craver. He had three during the course of the regular season. And they line up in the eye with Crouch turning, keeping, setting up to throw down the sidelines. And the pass is incomplete. He was looking for Thunder Collins coming out of the backfield. Collins is normally a tailback, but he's going to be a multi-role performer tonight. You know, we talked about Almost 90% of Nebraska passes have been completed to just four guys. That's it. Thomas and Gibson, the wide receivers, Wisdom, the tight end, and Thunder Collins. So when you see one come into ballgame, there is that chance that they will be throwing. Collins is in the backfield right now at tailback, and he is from Los Angeles, Manuel Arts High School, East LA JC. Down the line, he kept it turned and turned inside the traffic and was taken down in a hurry. So there's very little on that play. It's going to be third down and about 10 Sunday, January 27th. Stephen King, the modern master of suspense, brings terror home with Rose Red at Sunday, January 27th, only on ABC. Third and ten for the Huskers, and they've got trips on this side. Three wide on this side, one on the top. That's four wide outs, and out of the shotgun. Pass is thrown down the middle, completed to Tracy Wiskin, the tight end. Well, the tight end are already having a big fight. Shockey's had two big catches, and now Wistrom comes up with one. And for the first time tonight, Nebraska is on the Miami side of the field. Go ahead and roll it, because there's nothing fancy about this. Wistrom, who was split with the wide receivers, just runs a short post pattern. He tried to get behind the linebackers and under the safety, but he gets great separation off of the corner there. And I'm telling you something, Wistrom is very much like Shockey. He will get his receptions. He has 21 on the year. Crouch hands the ball away to uh, Thunder Collins, and uh, they just jump all over him. Uh, William Joseph. 282 pound junior out of Miami. A big tackle. It made the hit on him. 6'5, 282, and still growing. You know, Keith, these plays are scripted. Frank Solich is not shooting from the hip here. He's calculated, calling these plays off a chart. So, whatever the down and distance, he has designed a play for it, for that situation. When he finds a scheme and a play that works, he's making a notation, and that script will then go, and boy, they'll start to hammer. It's second down and 12. Take it to the fullback, keep it. They run that down this year as well, but this time Miami defends it. That ball might have come out. It did, I think. Miami says we've got it. The officials have not agreed yet. Well, if Miami... Now they do. Miami ball. So they each have a turnover. Yeah, but this one's a little bit bigger, Keith, because of the field position. They're now at midfield, inside Nebraska territory. 
you put Miami on a short field folks it's like running downhill hard to stop DJ Williams I think is the man that knocks it loose it's hard to tell it looked to me like he was out before that knee hit though McDougal comes out with the ball it is a fumble no matter and it's first down Miami at the Nebraska 49 yard line and immediately the Canes will try to strike deep as they go down the middle and it is touchdown Andre Johnson was all by himself I think Craver fell down Craver fell down and I'm telling you something Johnson just walked in so it may be a sea of red but that puddle of orange and green over here is having a hoot right now as their team jumps to the lead on a 49 yard pass play. Here's the extra point and it is good by Todd Sievers who comes from Ankeny Iowa. So a fumble by Crouch which was a bang bang play was the ball out did his knee hit first nonetheless Miami gets it it's like running downfield Craver falls on the man press coverage Johnson makes the catch all by himself nobody around him Miami takes advantage of the turnover this is the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T This will not make Nebraska fans feel any better, but this is a good play. D.J. Williams forces it out. There's the ball. His knee hasn't hit yet. That is a good call by the officials. Clearly a fumble, and Miami made them pay. Craver falling down made the touchdown easy, and it's seven to nothing as we hit the 6:51 mark of the first quarter. The Canes will kick it away now, and Nebraska will have the return, and they will send Josh Davis deep to return it. Josh is the son of Tony Davis MVP 1974 Sugar Bowl at Old Tulane Stadium in New Orleans 13 to 10 win over Florida did the game with Barry Switzer Todd Seavers will do the kicking off Seavers has a heck of a leg he's a big lanky guy he comes out of Iowa they've got Ada Oklahoma Ankeny Iowa the coaches from Oklahoma I like that warm Florida Sun it's not very deep and Davis comes up to about the 12 yard line to take it looks for a hole up the middle of the field the, and he fumbled the football the Kings dive after it Miami's got it oh my look at covered it Keith we told you about turnovers on any level of play it can change a ball game but I'm telling you in a championship game it's huge Miami makes a living off that. Look at this season, 45 coming into this game. They've got two here in this quarter. It's just inside the 35-yard line of Nebraska. First down for the Kings. Kevin Beard has come on now as a wideout for Miami. Well, that was a heck of a lick by Fitzgerald. Single back, Portis. Four wide outs. Going for the juggler again to the far side. And the ball is incomplete. The receiver beard had turned back inside. The ball went high and wide. Take a look at the Tostitos, uh, Tostitos player comparison. And you got to start with the quarterbacks, of course, what they've done this year. Everybody excited about this in Nebraska because he was only 48% last year. Expected that at Miami. Everything else, spectacular. Look at the rushing yards, though, and of course, this includes some sacks. That's a huge difference. But the turnover factor, 45 coming into this game by Miami, and certainly a big difference so far. Second down and 10. <laughs> No pressure on him, passes away in a hurry, drills it into the chest of the receiver, Darrell Jones, and it's going to be down to about penalty flag goes into the crowd. That'll be about the 27-yard line. You know, Keith, it looks like the defensive backs are starting to slip and slide down there. We had a helicopter trying to dry the field just before the game. We've had rain the last two days. Dead ball, personal foul, late hit on the offense, 15 yards. Penalties against Miami. Personal foul. Well, they aren't as damaging as turnovers, but it helps Nebraska. That offensive front of Miami, considered by many the best in the country. 
Yeah, I think I agree with that too, Keith. And when I stood next to McKinney the other day, I couldn't believe his size. <laughs> In case you didn't hear the dimensions a while ago, it's 6 9 3 40. Third down now and 18 for Miami. And here's a little shuffle pass to the fullback coming across. It's Kevin Beard, a flanker coming across. And there's very little room in the middle as the Huskers smelled it out and Burrow led the tackler. You know, against Colorado, the linebackers were overrunning the plays. I want you to watch Burrow this time. They are told don't overrun watch the comeback lanes and get three or four guys around the ball. Look at this. Great play by Burrow reads it all the way slides down the line looks for the cutback and makes the tackle. And so it is fourth and 15 and Capshaw is in the punt. Shanks oh, Shanks slides off to the right side and goes out of bounds up around the 15 yard line. He'll put it on the 14. So the Huskers fumble it away, but the personal foul call against Miami helped stop them, and Nebraska takes over. 5.24 to go in the first quarter. Miami leading Nebraska 7 to nothing on a clear night in Pasadena, California at the Rose Bowl. Charles Schwab will make contributions to the scholarship funds of each of the universities represented in the Bowl Championship Series. All right, the Huskers come out. They have the football at their own 14-yard line, having dodged the bullet. And Darren Diedrich is back in there at the eye back, number 30. And here he comes. Over the left side, and uh, penalty flag goes down. Keith, about a week and a half ago, I was sitting at Frank Solich's office in Lincoln, Nebraska, and he says, you know, we're going to pound them, we're going to pound them, we're going to pound them. We're going to be patient, and we hope we wear them down about the fourth quarter. So we're not surprised by what they're doing so far. Offside. Miami's offside. On the defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. It'll be first down and five now for Nebraska as the ball comes out to the 19 yard line. Frank Solich is going down that script. I'm not sure he found the play other than that pass to Wistrom that he's checked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Certainly not the fumble. Well, it's obvious that Miami is stripping when they get in traffic if they can. Crouch gives the ball away to the big back. And Dietrich battling, trying to get his first down. And he's going to come up a couple of yards short as uh, James Lewis came up to jump on top of the stack and take him down. You know, Eric Crouch says that Darren Dietrich reminds him of Amon Green, who now plays for the Green Bay Packers and has started for Nebraska's last national title team. You look at these numbers. Very, very effective runner. Had a terrific career there. Did not even play in the first game against TCU. He was out of that ball game, suspended for a personal reason by the coach. But uh, very talented running back. But he's playing tonight with a strained calf muscle that he hurt in practice this past week. He's one of many youngsters who's coming down from Canada to play football. Here's the pitch off the upset, and it goes to Dietrich, and he turns up the sidelines and goes into the crowd along with one of the officials who lost his footing and it's sliding in there. Depending on the mark, though, that's going to be. Very Awfully close. close to that chain. It is a first down. Well, they're slanting these big offensive linemen. They're getting down. They're trying to wall them off. Go ahead and freeze right there and look at the lane he's looking at right here. See, that's what he's trying to get out on. They're trying to wall off Nebraska, get around the corner. He sees the marker there and tries to step over. Got the good mark. First down. At the 25-yard line. Inside. He wanted to run the option that way, and Miami had just filled all the lanes. And rather than risk trouble and have a long pitch, he ate it. Keith, something they saw against Virginia Tech was the defensive end Green was not hitting the tight end. Consequently, the tight end was getting to the linebacker and cutting him off and leaving the fullback for the safety. When they saw that, they were walling him off, open up lanes, and the option was getting big yardage against Virginia Tech. They ran about 10 options in that game and got about 100 yards. So that's the tape that Frank Solich was watching. That's the tape that he tried to put in some of those options with the same type of schemes. He's looking right now at second down and 14. Crouch gives it to Diedrich. He gets a big hole over the right side. Hounds his way across the 35 and out to the 37-yard line. First down, Nebraska.
for this offensive line of Volk is 300 pounds, Finotti 340, Garrison's almost 300, Rutherford is. Look at the blocking, look at the hole, look at what he sees right here. I mean, it's wide open for him. Once he gets into the secondary, Diedrich's one of those guys that believes he can pull over linebackers and safeties and get that extra couple of yards, what we call yaks, yards after contact. First and 10 of the 37 yard line, 7 0 mind. They lead three minutes and 10 seconds to go in the first quarter. And it's kept by Klaus. Klaus is a burner. He's all the way down to the Miami 35 yard line. Edward Reed and Mike Rumpf the tackle. Just showed you the playbook. Wall them off. Kick them out. Take it inside and try to get yardage. The play they saw against Virginia Tech. Scheme them, run it, read it, react, and go. First down, move the chains. We just showed you that play. There it is. Crouch moves the chains, and now it's Nebraska in Miami territory. On the Miami 36 is where they mark it. That was a 27-yard run by Crouch. Pitch it out to Diedrich. Wants to throw. throw. Wants to throw it back. Now he's going to pull it down and try to make something out of nothing. And he does. As a matter of fact, instead of having a huge loss, he gets it back to about the 38-yard line. Of course, that's similar to the play they ran against Oklahoma for the touchdown, where they put in stunts and stunts number 16, who very rarely plays, but was a high school quarterback, threw the touchdown pass to Crouch. Yeah, he's Diedrich. back at quarterback now. He was a wide receiver then. That's right. And Diedrich, we saw him in practice in Lincoln, Nebraska, throwing this pass. They were trying to get it back to Crouch. Coming up on two minutes to go in the first period, Nebraska with its first threat of any size in the ball game tonight. This is probably the last series that Solich will be on his uh, his script, and then they'll throw that away and go to the plays that have got the shotgun, uh, hand the ball to the up man, and uh, he's going to pound to about the 32. E.J. Williams makes the tackle on Darren Diedrich, and from way up in the night sky, the Goodyear Blimp Eagle has been providing these aerial pictures. The Goodyear Blimp providing its first aerial coverage for television in the 1964 Rose Bowl. What a great scene this is. I cannot believe the sea of red. Oh, it's one of the most festive places in the world when you have your tournament. The Roses parade and the game and all of that which goes on in Pasadena. It's a wonderful thing. Here's a bullet thrown down the middle and it's incomplete. Edward Reed got a hand on it and slapped it away. Trying to go to his fullback, which is very rare, but they're breaking tendencies tonight. Judd Davies wasn't even looking for it. Now they're looking at fourth down. Yeah, and that's not a good thing. There's no way you can do anything right here except be the Campbell on fourth and seven or punt it. Well, it would be 50 yard field goal, and Josh Brown's 0 for 1, 50 plus. He's 1 for 2, 40 to 49. And they'll take time out to talk about it. And we have 112 remaining in the first quarter of play at the Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T. And so far, the fortunes have ebbed and flowed, but Miami leads. Next Wednesday, 9 p.m., uh, this game will become an instant classic. It'll be seen on ESPN Classics next Wednesday. I think they owe me dinner. I'm on ESPN <laughs> Classics a lot. You know what? That's <laughs> funny because Janet was just saying that to me the other day. You know, they've shown a lot of our games. We're, we ought to get something out of it. <laughs> Nice bottle of wine. Mark Shapiro went off and gave a, a big dude wearing a three-piece suit. You know, he left. He was the only one I knew that had any money. <laughs> hey, let's see what Nebraska can do here. They score here. This is a heck of a ball game. 33-yard line. And they're going to punt. Yeah, a little bit out of Josh, Josh Brown's range. Yep. But had they gotten that three, of course, it would have gotten everybody's attention. Hmm. Pooch it. Pretty good looking kick. And it takes a pretty good bounce. Comes on down about the 14 yard line is where they mark it out. So Miami gets the football back, still leading in the ball game, seven to nothing on their own 14 yard line, with a minute and five to go in the first quarter. Well, the Nebraska fumbles, of course, they've been huge here. And what it does when Crouch put that on the ground, they came back the very next play and scored. And then on the kickoff, 
Fitzgerald got a great lick, just knocked the ball loose, but the Nebraska defense held on that one. Nobody in the middle of the field right now. If they want to try one deep, Dorsey goes back instead and hands it off to Portis. Portis again is controlled by the Husker defenders. They stop him after a couple of yards. But this guy can really pick you. If you don't watch him and wrap your arms around him when he's running around looking for a hole, the next thing you know, he's looking at his hip pocket and he's got your wallet in it. You know what? I think he's one of college football's most underrated backs. Most underrated guys. 1,200 yards. Nobody even talks about him. All they talk about is Dorsey. Second down and eight for the Canes. Handed off to Portis. There he goes. That's the first down for Miami. Nothing fancy. The big guy on the left side gave him room. Willie Amos finally made the tackle for Nebraska. Only five or six guys in Miami history have had 1,000 yard seasons. He has a 1,200 yard season. Came into this game with five 100 yard games. And you put him in that secondary, that past the linebackers into with the safeties, he is extremely dangerous. I think only Edwin James and Otis Anderson have reached more yards in a single season in Miami. First quarter is over at the Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T, and our ABC Sports coverage will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. With Miami leading seven to nothing. You're watching ABC's coverage of the national championship, the Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T. First quarter scoring, Miami outscoring the opposition on 102 to 20. And Nebraska has scored only three points in the last five games, first quarter. So not surprised by this score here, seven nothing Miami over Nebraska. Haynes ball now, first down and ten as we go to the second quarter of play. Dorsey pumps it once. Now he's going deep, and it is caught. But did he get it inbound? Yes, sir. He did at the Nebraska 39-yard line. Theo Kramer. Losing the struggle with Andre Johnson. That's his second big catch of the night. The other one went for a touchdown. Well, Craver does have that one pick, but I'll tell you this. Johnson has those big receptions. And here, watch the body control when he goes, makes the catch, keeps his feet in bounds before he goes out. Now, Johnson's one of those four-by-one track guys. Most track guys really don't become quality receivers. I mean, there's Bob Hayes, of course, there's, there's Willie Golf, But he has the technique and separation skills of great receivers. So it's first down at the Nebraska 39 yard line. Dorsey looking for the juggler again. Getting some heat now as they flush him out. He throws it away. Once he got outside the tackle, he is free to throw it wherever he wants, and he threw it in the cheap seats. Johnson has two catches for 83 yards in the touchdown so far in the ball game. That last play was for 34. You know, Keith, I don't think anybody prepares for a game like Ken Dorsey. I mean, he watches tape and he reads voraciously game plans. These are his favorite targets. Andre Johnson's been huge here tonight. We haven't seen Beard. Jeremy Shockey made those first couple of catches. Nebraska made a little adjustment there, took him away, and Johnson's gotten more involved. So he gets everybody involved. He continues to watch the adjustments that Nebraska makes, and he goes in their weaknesses. Second down and ten. Give it to Portis. Lost his balance, but Whoa, keeps on going, and he might tear it open. Touchdown. They thought they had him. They didn't wrap him, and suddenly he was gone. way is what makes it go they almost had him in the backfield but watch his first step boom that takes the linebacker that way there's the hole then they come back and overrun the play he cuts back and go, scores go. he sees it as quick as anybody I think so it's 14 to nothing as they convert on the extra point five plays 86 yards a minute and a half and it's 14 zip. Ruben, once again, this is one of the better running backs in this country this season. And this is a tough guy. And this is a quick strike offense. I mean, they get the ball and right away they score. So the first touchdown was like seven seconds, and this one was like a minute. 
Boy, they go after you after sudden change. You give them a turnover or you give them the ball in good field position, they make you pay. Todd Seavers now will kick it away for Miami and Josh Davis, who fumbled the last time, is waiting for it, standing back near his goal line. Josh. This time he got all of his leg on it. He's going to knock it well back into the end zone. Davis stops and goes down to the knee just before he came up. Saturday, ABC Sports drops the puck on another exciting National Hockey League season. We have three great matchups. You'll see either the Avalanche Red Wings, Rangers Penguins, or the Capitals and Bruins. Action begins Saturday live at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific on ABC Sports. Well, partner, it's still early in this ball game, but you have the feeling that this drive here, this possession by Nebraska, is some kind of huge. Big, big, big. Is it ever? And you have to wonder now if they're starting to have flashbacks to the Colorado game. Oh, how's their psyche? Oregon took care of that, I think, the other night. This is Crouch coming around the corner, and he's got a first down. Edward Reed made the tackle on Eric Prouts. I would say, however, a few moments ago when Portis went for the touchdown, it probably got very quiet in Oregon. Because all the Ducks and their faithful have to be rooting for Nebraska in this game. The obvious point being that Oregon might be in position to claim a share of a national championship. Look how patient he is on that option. Look how he reads his blocks, waits for them to develop, and then cuts off the tailbones of Fanodian Bulk. So move the football out to the 33 yard line close to the 34 and Crouch will come this way stand up look to throw and pull it down and he is caught from behind after he picks up a couple of yards he almost popped out of there he would have had 10 15 yards if he'd gotten away from that one man Jamal Green and Jamal Green is quick you know he's a, a defensive lineman who's 6 3 but he's only 253 that's not big for a defensive lineman and he's got terrific quicks same with McDougal on the other side. Jamal Green played a heck of a ball game at Virginia Tech. Well, he did, but he's the one that uh, kind of played soft, according to the coaches, on those options. And it was just a misread on his part. He didn't know he was supposed to hit the tight end. Bang it in the middle. It'll be third down and long now for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. First and ten brought to you tonight by Computer Associates. had the feeling that Miami's ready to open up the floodgates unless Nebraska can get something going here. Well they got to keep the Miami offense on the bench as long as they can. Everybody talks about that Nebraska option. Nebraska has five different options for this game but they don't just run the regular ride read option everybody talks about. Most plays are designed for Crouch. They're on third and seven right now. The ball is whipped downfield. Intercepted. Went right through the hands of the receiver and it's touchdown Miami. James Wistrom went right through his hands. It was Wistrom, and he was open, and the pass was there. He's open. There's the ball. Goes through his hands. There's the pick, and the floodgates are now open. Seaver's kick is good. And you've got 12.52 to play, and Nebraska's killing itself. Turnovers and Miami is cashing them in. They lead 21 to nothing. The Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by AT&T. Let your business, let your life be boundless. Dodge, you can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge, your Morgan Stanley financial advisor who will never let you lose sight of what you're investing for. Sears, only Sears has the brands you want at the prices you need. Sears, where else? And Nokia, the ability to personalize your phone, your life, your world. Nokia, connecting people. Oh, those turnovers. Isn't that the truth? Three turnovers tonight by Nebraska. And keep in mind, Miami led the nation with 27 interceptions. That's 28. They came into the game with 45 takeaways. 
And of course the two fumbles in the pick tonight 14 points scored off three Nebraska turnovers. Everybody was questioning the Nebraska defense that seems to be playing pretty well. It's the turnovers that have killed them. Twenty one to nothing with twelve fifty two to go in the first half. <clears throat> Ball fell off the tee so they're going to reject it. And Davis waits for it in the end zone. It's going to be a tough road to hoe now for the Nebraska offense. Keep in mind, Miami's defense, three shutouts this year and gave up a touchdown or less in eight of the 11 games. High kick, not too deep. Davis at the six. Takes a pretty good lick up around the 19 yard line, but he holds on to the ball. And uh, the Cornhuskers will go to work. That hit by Kellen Winslow. No, not that Kellen, his son. Now time for the Aflac trivia question. Today's question, who was the last Heisman Trophy winner whose team went on to win the national championship? Can I answer it? No. Oh. Wait for the duck. <laughs> <laughs> Officially the 20. Tell you. The Canes are laying their ears back now on defense. Vilma, the hit on Crouch. Well, everybody talks about the high scoring offense, and it is, but I think Miami's defense is the strength of the team. I mean, it's just the way they play and the speed with which they play it. Keep in mind, the last two first rounds, uh, uh, I mean, they, they just continue to run after the ball. They, they make the turnovers, force the turnovers. They get eight and nine guys around the football. On second and 11, here's an option to the left side. Pitch it back to Diedrich. Oh, there's nothing there. There's five white shirts over there. Five. Green and Rump leading the group. Keith, just by its scheme alone, Nebraska's offense is not one of those come-from-behind offenses. Now, obviously, with the history that they've had, they don't come from behind very often because they lead, but they've never overcome a 10-point deficit under Frank Solich. And here they're down 21. Well, they go with four wideouts on this play and put uh, Crouch back there in the shotgun by himself. As time throws it down the middle and misses Wistrom. All bounced in front of him. And keep that significant. They've already gotten Nebraska out of their game plan. They've got them out of what they do and what they like to do best. Oh, they'll punt it away, and Miami is, if they handle the ball properly and well, they will have very good field position for the next possession. And one more might make for a quiet night in Pasadena. <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> Don't say it. It's been that kind of BCS, though, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Out of there, it's another beauty. He had a 55 yarder a while ago, and that one's out of bounds up at the 34 yard line. So that's another fine punt by Larson. It's about a 45 yarder. At 11 13 to go in the first half, 21 nothing Miami. I'm out. Aerial coverage of tonight's game is provided by ATT. Here come the Canes. First down and 10. The ball is on their own 34 yard line. They lead 21 to nothing. And it's real serious right now for the Cornhuskers. Three turnovers, reducing the scoring opportunities in Miami is uh, tested just like if they own the register. Going deep on this play. Got a man up there. He's got the ball. It's Andre Johnson who is having a career night. They can't cover him. The ball is inside the 30 yard line down at the 21 is where they put it down. Willie Amos and Dion De Booker were trying to cover him, but they just couldn't run with him. Right now it's just speed. 4 3 speed by Johnson. He just runs by the safety Amos, and Dorsey's putting the ball up there with a lot of air so he can just run under it. But there's no question right now the difference in this ball game is pure speed, and Miami has it. Frank Gore checks in. At the tailback position for the Canes. At the Nebraska 21 yard line, Dorsey back. 
Looking to the end zone. It's touchdown. Shucky. Wow. They're making it look easy. Shocky came out of the backfield that time. Piece of it, and it's no good. Told you that they move Shockey around. They flex him. They put him at tight end. This time they've got him at fullback. He's just going to come out here in the flats and then just come back this way. It's like a skinny post from the fullback position. A little motion. Get out in the flats. Turn it up, and the ball's waiting for him right there at the five-yard line. Just can't draw it up any better than that. You have to wonder where the defenders are. It's not that complicated of a play. 27 to nothing. Good snap. Good hold. You couldn't see the number, but somebody got, got it one hand on it and got it away. Are you surprised by yes. what's happening? Yes, I am. I really am too. But it's turnovers that have really done it. Oh, there's no question. I think the defense really played well in the first quarter. Gave up a couple of plays. Craver fell down on the first touchdown. Actually, was pulled down by Johnson. And then Portis had the big run. But outside of that, they played pretty well. But it looks like now they're starting to break down a little bit defensively. Two plays, six to six yards, and 33 seconds for that touchdown. Four different players now have scored a touchdown for the Hurricanes tonight. It's amazing, Keith. We told you this was a quick strike offense. Yep. I mean, all year long. Their average on touchdown drives is two minutes and five seconds. Sudden change, they call it. You get a turnover, boom, sudden change, make it pay. High kick coming down at the two-yard line to Josh Davis. Oh, he had no chance. I mean, they were down there like rockets. Winslow. Kellen Winslow again. Wow. Earlier, we asked you the Aflac trivia question, who was the last Heisman Trophy winner whose team went on to win the national championship? And the answer is Charles Woodson. Michigan won the Rose Bowl to clinch a share of the 1997 national championship with the Nebraska Cornhuskers. It's like chum to a shark right now. You can just feel it's a frenzy by the Miami Hurricanes. Props from the 11. Turns, hands the ball inside, and uh, there's a yard maybe for Judd Davis. Nebraska used to have that series of fullbacks and the big offensive lineman that could every once in a while pop that fullback out of there and he'd turn in a big play. But they haven't done that a whole lot this year. This place tonight just jammed with Nebraska fans. Severely outnumbered the Miami fans. But right now, Nebraska fans sound like they're in the library. They probably feel like it. There's a little bit of daylight on the left side, getting it out to about the 15-yard line for Thunder Collins, who's come back in at tailback. Collins is 190 pounds versus two and a quarter for Darren Diedrich. So they may gain a little bit in, uh, in foot speed with Collins, but they lose the bulk of Diedrich, the power. He played behind Dan Alexander at Buckholder, but he's had a nice season. He's the receiving back with excellent hands. He had the flu a couple days ago. It is third down and seven with the ball on the 15-yard line. Crouch pulls it down and takes off and cuts it to the 22-23, and that'll be good for a first down. Howard Clark made the tackle. He's playing at a linebacker position tonight in uh, replace uh, Chris Campbell. Keith, I think right now it is critical that the Cornhuskers don't panic. They stay with their game plan. They start to bang away, continue to bang away at Miami. Defensively, of course, they've got to stop them. There's no question about that. But they've got to start forcing some turnovers of their own to get back in this game. But Crouch and his offense just have to continue the game plan because it's too early to panic, even though they're down 27 to nothing. I was laughing with Larry Coker the other day. And we, what we got here is nothing more than Oklahoma, Nebraska, because Larry comes from Okima, Oklahoma. Here's Crouch just sandwiched. Coming from the blind side, uh, it was Howard Clark 
D.J. Williams had him occupied, and Clark just nailed it. Well, D.J. Williams slid out of his linebacker spot to the end of the line and came around from behind and just drilled yes, Eric did. Crouch. Crouch never saw him coming. Now he's coming from the backside, and when Crouch goes back to him, there's 17 to tattoo him. Boy, just flat out stoned him. But Crouch is very durable. 14 yard line now. And second down and 20. Look out. It's just Crouch almost breaking into the open. But he gets up close to the 30 yard line before Edward Reed finds him and brings him down. Both gave him a good block, and you're right, Keith. He almost broke it, but again, it's the speed of Reed chasing him down. Watch 58. Volk get a pretty good block. Then the kick out block. He picks it up and look at Reed 20 just chasing down. Reed's about as good as anybody I've seen in that secondary that free safety spot this year. Leads the nation with nine picks. Third down and five. Crouch taken down behind the line of scrimmage back around the 26 yard line. And Nebraska's going to have to punt it away. That is the eighth tackle for a loss. Crouch is feeling it, and he's slow getting up. Well, somebody else has got to do something to help him. And so far, they haven't been able to. They really have become very one-dimensional. Kyle Larson punting has 55, 19, and 46. Three kicks tonight. Room to return it, however, by uh, Buchanan. Bill looking for some help and got some. Stepped out of bounds at about the 44. Came within a breath, though, of <laughs> breaking it all the way. Oh, I know it. Wow. He was almost gone, but he hit the chalk. That's the 45. You're watching the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T on ABC Sports. <laughs> Shaq knows where to hang out, doesn't he? Oh, I'm telling you, he's a big dude. Oh, he's... Who's bigger, McKinney or Shaq? Shaq's bigger. Shaq's bigger. I know he is. There's Governor Bush. Governor of Florida. Clinton Portis is back in there at tailback right now for the Canes. They lead it by a score of 27 to nothing with six minutes and 39 seconds to go in the first half. Dorsey, little quick pop to the sidelines, thrown behind the intended receiver, Andrew Johnson. I mean, if you got the kind of night that Andre Johnson is having, you might as well just keep throwing it to him until somebody stops it. Yeah, I agree with that. Right now, their speed is just uh, devastating that defense. You know, we're talking about uh, McKinney. The offensive lineman, all everything. Bryant McKinney, and you look at this, he's got an 18 shoe, wingspan 92 inches. That's eight feet. Vertical leap of 32 inches, 40 yard dash, five flat, and he bench presses the world. Man, who I take, Shaq or McKinney? <laughs> Ball coming to the left side, and once again, there is yardage after contact with Portis. He turned it back in and picked up two yards when he really shouldn't have had any, but Jamie Burrow couldn't knock him off his feet. You know, partner, I had to laugh so hard when you were shaking hands with McKinney the other day. <laughs> you couldn't even see your hand. Up to my elbow. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those things. Quiet gentleman. He sure is. Thank what, goodness. What a talent. When was the last Third. time you saw an offensive line make get 26 Heisman votes? Mm -hmm. Third down and seven. Drilled right in between defenders and a penalty flag on the field as the catch is made by Shockey again, Jeremy Shockey. Of course, Nebraska will take every one of those breaks they can get, holding or personal fouls, because right now, without question, Cornhuskers are on their heels defensively. Holding on the offense, 10 yards. Previous spot, repeat third down. So that backs the Canes up 10, and here's Todd Harris. 
Well, Keith, quickly, two quick stories that are developing. The shoes for the Nebraska defensive backs are having all kinds of problems with their grip. I talked to the equipment manager. He says all they brought is that standard nine stud cleat. There'll be no change in halftime. And Coach Craig Bull is on the linebackers and the DBs. He says you're not communicating, thus the last score. Keith. Nope. The penalty puts the ball back on the 37-yard line for Miami, where it's third down and 18. Dorsey back, a little short drop, throws it down the middle. Ball is caught by Kevin Beard. Uh, no, Andre Johnson, and Johnson is going to have another first down for Miami. That should not happen third and 18, and they give it up to Johnson. You've got to look at Shockey. You've got to look at Johnson. They've been the main targets, and Johnson using his hands. Watch coming off the line. Look at his hands. Look at his pull in the jersey. Freeze him up, and look at the separation. Johnson now, we talked about a track guy, but he's got all the qualities and all the poten potential of being a great receiver. Swanee? And Timmy, he does everything absolutely perfect. A dedicated guy. You know, he stays at home, lives at home with his family because he doesn't want to waste time hanging around the guys. He wants his whole focus to be on school and playing football. Ball is incomplete. Rolls out of bounds. Went right through his arms and rolled out of bounds. Incomplete. Well, intended, it had, Portis had his hands on it. You know, you don't see that many track guys pick up the technique and the, the style and the separation that Johnson has. There's another pull down. This was a touchdown. I thought that Craver slipped. He actually pulled him down. But if there's no flag, he's getting away with it. That's pretty good technique. And here he is again. And that's speed, pure speed. That's his 4 3 40 speed there. They've ruled out a catch, Timmy. Catch Ball went out of bounds, yeah. yeah. I saw him throw the beanbag. That normally means they're going to say it was a catch and a fumble. Back to the spot of the fumble. With the ball rolling out of bounds, Miami retains possession at the 30-yard line. And that was their break. It looked like it was going to stay in bounds and Nebraska would get it. Yeah. Shucking down and two. Go to Portis. At first, Monk stood him up a little bit. He just waited a second, a millisecond, and then went right off the, the contact and picked up the first down at the 25-yard line. Really impressed with Clinton Portis. He's only 5'11", 200 pounds. But you talk about a guy that gets yaks, yards after contact, he's it. He was hit at the line of scrimmage. As you said, he bounced off. Never gives his body up to the tackler fully. Miami threatening to really blow this thing open. They lead 27 to nothing. It's first down at the Nebraska 25-yard line. Dorsey inside the 10 complete to Jeremy Shucky, the tight end. Scott Shanley couldn't handle it. Take a look at the Nokia team comparison, and right now there is no comparison. It's all Miami. <laughs> And Shockey with that last play is just too fast for Shanley. As you look at these numbers, and these are for the season, I mean, scoring Miami's first, eighth in total offense, second in the nation in passing. Who cares about the rushing? They're 40th. They get out of it what they need out of it. They get that 50-50 bump from Portis. And it's first and goal. The ball is on the eight-yard line for the Kings. <laughs> Dorsey, time, throws. Touchdown, Johnson. Craver again complaining about the push off, or that time it's gross complaining about the push off. But they're not throwing any flags on it. Johnson is big time. Yeah, but twice now we've seen him pull a defender. But Keith, if they're not going to throw a flag on it, I don't blame him for doing it. Well, I understand. There's no pull on that. He just nope. separated. He just came in. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, go on. Kick is good. It is 34 to nothing. Miami with 335 to play in the first half. And it's quiet at the Rose Bowl. The mountain is pretty big right now for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. We've still got three, almost three and a half minutes to play in the first half. They're down by 34 points, and the Miami offense is just killing the Nebraska defense. That body language over on that Nebraska sideline is not good. Nope, it is not. Seavers will kick it off. Low 
this time. Davis angles for it, goes out of bounds. It'll come out to the 25 yard line. Now let's join John Saunders and Terry Bowden. And fellas, I hope you got your dancing shoes. Well, keep coming up on the GM Overdrive halftime report. Mike Bellotti, head coach of the Oregon Ducks, will join us. I know you're a big cheerleader for Nebraska today, but you're not cheering loudly enough. No, I'm going to have to root a lot harder in the second half. I tell you, expert analysis is not rocket science tonight. This team is dominant over Nebraska. All right, at halftime, we'll also give a look and a listen to the two bands in this game. Keith, that's coming up on the GM Overdrive halftime report. Back to you. Thank you, John. Was Terry saying we weren't rocket scientists? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's just been domination so far. It sure has. There were the three turnovers, and then from that point, Whoa. and it's just gotten worse. And coming right up the middle to make a big play is a fellow named Vince Wilfork. He is a freshman. He's 6'2", 346 pounds. I will spell the name W I L F O R K. Remember it. And I'll tell you, not only remember it, but he's going to be sensational, as you indicated. I don't know how Eric Crouch got this ball over. I mean, he's head up. Now, now watch how he gets the ball away to Davis. Unbelievable. Or Davis he still didn't still didn't mean any yardage. Nope. Second down and 13. Fox turns back inside. Now he's going to get punished a little bit as he comes up to about the 44 yard line a yard or so short of the first down but he took a thump and when he went down. Next Thursday night at the Staples Center here in Los Angeles, America's Olympic hopefuls will meet for the national championship. At stake, a chance to represent the U.S. in Salt Lake City. At State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships coverage begins with the men's final next Thursday. Thursday night at 8 Eastern and Pacific here on ABC Sports. Handed over to the left side to Thunder Collins, and Collins uh, will get the first down. And they move the chains up to about midfield. Keith, everybody knows Eric Crouch is Nebraska's all time offensive leader, and he's really, really tough. But tonight, somebody has to get involved. Somebody, they've got to find a corner turner and a cornerback smashing eye back to take some of the heat off of Crouch. He cannot do it by himself. And this offense is designed for an eye back with power and a fullback who can block. Well, you're not going to do it against this defense. I guarantee you. No, they're out quickening them. They're out toughening them. <laughs> well, that ball is away. The receiver went over and sat down. And the pass was away. And uh, Wilson Thomas was uh, 15 yards from the ball. Actually, I'm not sure he sat down. Mike Rumpf is the guy, the cornerback over there, gave him a pretty good chug. And it held him up. Actually knocked him off his route. Watch number eight. Gives him a hand. Then here's the contact. And by that time he just can't release. It was supposed to be a stop and go up that sideline. He's a good target that Thomas. He's 6'6, 215. That's the first time he's seen the ball all night. There's no question about that. He's a basketball player. You know, he's he's one of those guys that we've seen this year that can jump. A minute and 42 to go in the first half. This is Thunder Collins trying to come around the corner and they're having none of it. That's a two-yard pickup. It'll be third down and a bunch. Edward Reed one more tackle he's a senior out of St. Rose Louisiana started to go away to the draft last year for the Sunday ball and decided to stay along with others and that made all the difference for this team interesting this year Thunder Collins had his best game in a game that was held up by lightning against Baylor went over 100 yards that's his real name Thunder and his dad's name is Thunder senior yes and Thunder the third is coming along. oh my <laughs> Storm is brewing. <laughs> Third down and eight. <laughs> and that won't do it. Pass was caught by Wilson Thomas. And he's held short of the first down by three yards. And it'll bring up fourth down. 40 seconds to go. The Huskers might as well go for it here. Clock is running at 35. They got one more play coming. And they're not going to do it. Well, maybe they are. Crouch is staying in the game. And yeah, you've got to keep 25 seconds. You're down 34 to nothing. You certainly don't want to give it back to them, but they can't do much with it if they do. 15 seconds. A little flip outside. And 
that does not get the first down and so Miami will get the ball with seven seconds remaining on the clock and they've got time to put one in the air and see what happens. Coming up at halftime, the GM Overdrive halftime report. We're just seven seconds or one play away from that. Larry Coker, who, if he wins this game tonight, and the odds are pretty good, he's going to. He will join Benny Oosterbahn of Michigan in college football history as only the second coach to win the national championship in his first season as head coach. They take a knee and head for the clubhouse. Leaving the ball spinning on the ground, leading by a score of 34 to nothing, the Miami Hurricanes dominating. ABC Sports coverage of the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Welcome to the GM Overdrive Halftime Report. Here now, John Saunders and Terry Bowden. Part of the halftime festivities here at the Rose Bowl, a look and listen to the Cornhusker Marching Band. This game right now looking very much like the Miami Hurricanes will walk off with this trophy. John Saunders, Terry Bowden joined by Mike Bellotti, head coach of the Oregon Ducks. And coach, first of all, congratulations on you winning the Fiesta Bowl. A great season, finishing the season ranked number two. With some luck, you would have had a chance to perhaps get a split national championship. But right now, your team did its talking on the field. It did. And I'm very proud of the group of players and coaches I had this year. They set out, we were number two at the end. We tried hard, it just didn't quite get over the top. Mike, I'm going to tell you, you had a great quarterback in Joey Harrington. Tell us again how special he is as a college quarterback. Well, Joey's a great football player. Maybe more than that, he's a great leader. He's got that charisma. He's got the ability to not only take his level of play up, but elevate the level of play of people around him. When you look at what this Nebraska Cornhusker team has done over its last six quarters, it is very unimpressive. As a matter of fact, 62 points they gave up to Colorado. Today, they've given up 34 in the first half. Take a look at the bottom line. The first 11 games, a total of 127 points. And Mike, my question to you is, I think most people would agree that your school belonged here before Nebraska did. If that wasn't evident before the game, it is evident at halftime. What can you do to tweak this system in the BCS? Well, you know, I'm not sure. I, I, I have obviously said my point about the BCS. I do think it would have been nice for us to get the chance and the opportunity to be here. The polls and everything and the uh, thing had us ahead. The computers did not. And maybe, as Terry said, maybe we, maybe we only use the computers if it's a tie or it's not one and two clear cut. All right, because as you look at things right now, Nebraska has a hole to come back from that even the 70,000 plus or so that are here, the Cornhusker faithful, can't think they can get it done. More of the Cornhusker marching band.
from here on the Rose Bowl. When we come back, we'll continue with the GM Overdrive Halftime Report. Welcome back to the GM Overdrive Halftime Report. John Saunders, Terry Bowden, and Mike Bellotti, head coach of the Oregon Ducks, Miami, leading at halftime 34 to nothing. We've talked about all the politics involved in the system that we have. Let's talk a little bit of football right now. Mike, clearly Nebraska didn't seem to go to their option as much as you would have expected. No, and I think they needed to. I think that's the only weapon that they have that really separates them from Miami and the other teams that Miami has played. Here is again one of the things you want to do is get Eric on the edge. They sealed the edge that time. Uh, Miami helped because their backer stepped up inside, but he got the option, got the chance to run free. And Terry, when you look at the option, Miami may be the only team we can think of that can stop it from behind, who can catch Eric Crouch. They can't run the option. This Miami team is so fast. The one thing that counters the option is speed, and Miami has so much speed there isn't enough width to the field to make that option go. The speed of Miami just overcomes the outside option. And Mike, how do you stop? The quick strike. I mean, they're going to the tight ends, the wide receivers. They've got so many weapons. Shockey, their tight end. They line him up in the backfield, bring him out. He can run down the field. Here, the little motion. He gets the wheel route. He makes a great move on the defensive back to beat him into the end zone. Unbelievable. Great, great balance, great diversity. And Terry, for the Cornhuskers, if they get away from the option, which they're going to have to down 34 to nothing, when they go for the quick strike, Miami's speed on defense takes over. It's not just their speed, it's their athletic ability. They cause turnovers. They're number one in the nation causing turnovers. They intercept the ball. James Lewis here makes the big intercept interception goes in for a touchdown that was an athletic interception they also caused two other turnovers that went for scores they stripped Eric Crouch and they put a helmet on the ball on a kickoff return they are a great athletic team that causes turnovers Eric Crouch hasn't been pounded this much I don't think the entire season the Hurricanes with the team speed the second half still to come right now let's give a listen to the other side of the band from Miami's band of the hours we continue with the GM overdrive halftime report from the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. We'll continue with more of the GM Overdrive Halftime Report in a moment. The Miami Band of the Hour cheering on the Hurricanes. 34 points, the most points ever scored by a team in the first half of a Rose Bowl game. We're going to let you guys be the coaches. And Terry, I'm going to give you the easy job because Mike just had a win. You need a win more badly than he does. You're Larry Coker. What are you telling the team in the locker room? Well, it might not be so easy to get their attention, but he tells them you got to play like a championship. Stay focused, stay poised, 
concentrate on continuing to throw knockout punches over and over again. There have been comebacks before. you got to make sure you get their attention. Mike, you get to be Frank Solich in a locker room that's got to be tough to be in right now. It is tough, but it's never over till it's over. we got to find a way to stop the explosion plays. We've probably got to back our corners off, mix a little zone with man, and find a way to pull out all the trick plays or any of the big scoring quick strikes that we got. Let her rip. We still got to have to play. Yeah, there's no answer for team speed, though, is there? No, not really. Miami, as long as they don't turn the ball over, they got to play real good ball control, hold on to the football, make sure they cover it up, don't let the ball be stripped and turned over. Now Larry Coco, perhaps about ready and poised to become just the second coach in college football history to win a championship in his first season. Second half is coming up after a word from our ABC stations. has been the GM Overdrive Halftime Report. This is the Bowl Championship Series on ABC Sports as coverage of the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T continues. Here is a portrait of athleticism Miami style. It's entitled Johnson Shockey. Shockey Johnson. Keith, when this game started, we talked about the cornerbacks. They challenged and were beaten. That's been the story of this ball game, as you see reflected there in the numbers. It's been utter domination by the Miami Hurricanes. Yeah, and not surprising, it came through the passing yard again. We talked about Craver. We talked about Gross. They played up on the line of scrimmage. They were unable to match the speed of Miami. The three turnovers, huge. 14 points off those turnovers, obviously, and that's made a huge difference as well. The tackles for a loss, an impressive number there, Timmy. Well, and that's exactly right. And, and again, it's speed. Miami kicking off to Nebraska to start the second half of play, leading 34 to nothing. Here's the return by Josh Davis. Finds a hole. And brings it out across the 40-yard line, and a penalty flag follows it. So there could have been a grab at a face mask there as Davis almost popped out of there with it. Five yard face mask into the Waiting run. Waiting for the official. First down. So Nebraska is going to start this second half of play in pretty good field position, but. Is the mountain too high or the hole too deep? Well, you would think so since they've never been able to overcome a 10 point deficit under yeah. Frank Solis, but they're never in this position. It's very rare. They were against mm -hmm. Colorado, but not this bad. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you this Nebraska's got a lot of class, though, and they came out swinging, and I expect they will this entire half. Well, they're not going to surrender. We know that, but the point is simply can they? Can they? I don't think so. Yeah. Too much speed. We talked about it at the beginning. Too much raw talent, more than Nebraska. And uh, they're in control of the situation here. They want to make sure that they are, in fact, the one and only national championship. Now, if you watch the defense just flying around, they're shooting some gaps, they're playing some games, but for the most part, they are using speed to stop Eric Crouch. And they're stopping him from behind. The halftime guys were talking about the speed, the ability to track him down from behind. They've done that. They've got him every which way you can believe. They're looking at second down and 12 right now for the Huskers as they go to the shotgun and uh, Crouch has no chance. He's got nobody to throw it to and by the time he uh, wanted to make a move with it Buchanan had a hold of him and that'll do it. And here's Lynn Smunt. Well Keith obviously Larry Coker was very happy with the way his team played in the first half but he said he coaches in halves. We won the first half. The second half is totally different. He wants them to come out and play with the same kind of intensity. He was especially pleased with his defensive unit. Not only are they fast making the play, but they're playing aggressively and they're playing smart. And he expects them to continue throughout the second half, Keith. Thank you, sir. And you know, that's the key. They're playing smart. With all that speed, it's easy to take advantage of that with cutback lanes and using that speed to run them out of there. But these guys, they're quick, but they're patient. And Crouch looking here to see what he might do says wait a minute I don't have what I need then he spends a timeout early in the third quarter of play and you can't afford to give Miami field position again if you do there's one more in the end zone and the party's over. It's a cool night at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. 
And it's been a hot Miami football team. And right now, Nebraska's looking at third and 19 from their own 36 yard line. Crouch, heat coming, pass away, pass all. Oh, that's a good catch. But it's well short of a first down. Catch is made by Wilson Thomas. And they're going to have to go to Thomas now. You, Westrom has not been able to produce a whole lot for them. And Thomas is the only other uh, wideout that's seen the ball. There has to be such a sense of urgency right now in Nebraska. I mean, they've got to do better offensively than they just did in that series. But they've got to play quickly to get back into this thing. 34 to nothing. Don't think it's possible, but that's the way they have to play. Kyle Larson will punt. And it's Philip Buchanan waiting for the ball. He's standing right on his tent. Low kick. Up to the 15, takes it. First man missed him. Second man got him. And he took him down at about the 12 yard line. And that second man was Dewan Gross, the cornerback. Okay, take a look at the Morgan Stanley storyline for the game. And obviously, all Miami in that first half. We talked about their speed. We talked about their success. We talked about their what they're doing. They allow nine points a game tonight. Zero 34 to nothing in the first half. Dorsey having a pretty good night. 258 yards three touchdowns did throw that one pick average 315 yards rushing for Nebraska tonight. 88 crouch 88 total yards one fumble one interception. Three uh, turnovers uh, by Nebraska led to early scores for Miami and from that point on the uh, Canes have just been efficient. That's all nothing fancy like things like this. They just keep on pounding away and uh, Portis is very difficult to bring down on the first contact. Here's Todd Harris. Well, Keith, as you can imagine, I had a very quick conversation with Coach Solis as he's going off at halftime. All he said was, I'm as shocked as everyone else that they put up 34 points on us in one half. I said, what do you tell the guys when they come back or in the locker room? He said, I have no idea. One other thing, I talked to the trainer to find out if anyone had been injured. He said, no one should be injured yet because we haven't hit anyone yet. Keith, back to you. <laughs> Guarantee you their psyche is injured. Well, you bet you. Feelings are hurt. First down on that run by Portis. Dorsey's pass off the hands of the intended receiver Johnson. My goodness, he can drop one. That's a revelation. Of course, everybody looks back at that 62 points they gave up in the last outing, and we were all saying, well, how will they respond tonight? What will we see out of Nebraska? And they give up 34 in the first half. Shell shocked, you bet they are. Outplayed, yes, sir. More speed for Miami, you've got it. Well, show you save electricity. Dorsey turns and hands the ball away to Portis. Portis, a 5'11, 201 pounder, but he plays bigger. I really like him. I think he's a heck of a running back. He sure is. First and ten is brought to you by Monster.com this quarter. Ball is resting on the 28 yard line for Miami. Their side of the field, and it's third down along four. Kevin Beard's on the field now for the game. Got it right up. Dorsey throws it. Beard's caught it, and uh, he's got a first down up near the 44. Willie Amos making the tackle. So the new guy with the clean shirt arrives and immediately gets the ball. the Miami Hurricanes 11 and 0 you've talked about the job that Larry Coker's done the average average margin of victory is astounding 34 points they average 43 a game look how they've outscored opponents we talked about the 45 takeaways and they've got the three turnovers tonight and they have the longest winning streak in the nation trying to go to 22 in a row tonight of course he hands it to the up man uh, Willie McGay gets a carry and gets pounded down right at the line of scrimmage well, Donna Shalala, the new president of the University of Miami, is here at the game and probably wondering uh, what she's going to say to Larry when he brings up the question of the future. That's Paul D. who will have to buffet the first question, the athletic director. But remember, Donna Shalala was the one who hired the people who turned fortunes around at Wisconsin. 
Well, the fortunes at Miami are already in pretty good shape, thank you. And here's the ball thrown outside to Portis. Portis, a penalty flag on the field as Portis is going to break this one big and score, but look out for the flag. It's going to that one's coming back. It will, Keith. It was Robert Williams, the tight end, who locked on Irwin Swinney and just held him. He was the lead blocker and just held him for 10 yards down the field. A big break for Nebraska, but obviously this hold was right in front of the side judge. Oh, Clinton's walking back in. On, on the offense, Come on, guys. Ten yards, spot of the foul, repeat, second down. Here's Portis trying to get some blocks. There's Swinney, Swinney Williams actually locking up on each other, but that was the end because Williams had already taken his jersey and Swinney was just getting back at him. Let me tell you about Erwin Swinney now. He has replaced Dewan Gross, the cornerback. We talked about Graver and Gross being in the corners and how they were going to play up and play man and press them. Well, they weren't able to be successful doing that. We said it was aggressive and they were beaten badly. Well, Swinney now has replaced Gross. Frank Gore is in there at tailback replacing Portis. Clinton needed to catch his breath after that run that was all back that was uh, negated a 57 yard touchdown uh, reception and run nine yard gain 10 yard penalty second down 11 and you just saw Gore handle it you know Frank Gore is a freshman this time last year he was in high school watching this game on television now he's averaging nine yards a carry for the season second best per carry average in Miami history so we talked about Portis and what a talented back he is then you come in with the freshman Gore and he's an outstanding guy nine yards per carry Keith. He hadn't figured out how hard the game is yet. <laughs> I think you're right. Third down and seven for the games. Look at this formation. Dorsey, little quick one. It's completed. There's the first down. And then some. All the way down to the 32-yard line. Kevin Beard getting his second reception in this possession. And Pat Ricketts finally brought him down for Nebraska. Nebraska's tackling now is getting sloppy. They aren't grabbing cloth. They aren't wrapping up. Boy, I tell you, when you get your head on the swivel and you pound you to 34 to nothing, the defense now just looks like it's in a fog. Jarrett Payton has come on the field. That's Walter's son at fullback for Miami. Jarrett is a 210 pounder, a sophomore out of Arlington, Illinois. Cornerbacks have gotten a lot softer now. They're playing off, not pressing. Dorsey throws underneath. Ball goes to Portis. Back in the ball game at tailback. And they track him down pretty quickly as Craver makes the tackle. Theo Craver's a quality player, and he's gotten beaten a couple times tonight. And I know we've had to highlight the, the fact that he was beaten, but he's played in every game since he arrived as a freshman. He's a legitimate All-American. He'll play in the NFL. But that's one of the things about this Nebraska defense that's not like years past as you look at Craver and you see what he's done. You only have one or two guys that could possibly play at the next level in this defense. It's a bunch of no names at Nebraska now. Craver's one. He'll play on Sundays and maybe Kelsey. But that's about it. Second down and ten. Ball is at the 32 yard line of Nebraska. And Dorsey lets it go. It is incomplete, and it's almost caught by Andre Johnson as uh, Irwin Sweeney lost his balance. Sweeney made a nice adjustment on the ball. He looked back late, then his feet slipped, but he still was able to get a hand on it. Not Dorsey. bad coverage. Dorsey was fussing there because he thought he had six. Here comes 16 right at you. That's Swinney. Not bad coverage. Plays him inside out. He's right on his hip pocket. There go his feet, but he reaches back just enough to get a hand on it. This is great body control because you're right. Otherwise, that's another catch and a touchdown. Third and ten. Double wide bottom of your picture. One single at the top. Shotgun for Dorsey. Find time to throw it. Gets it off. Oh, my goodness. That ball came out. Incomplete. Incomplete forward pass. But there again, Keith, Nebraska came with the blitz. Miami picked it up, and Dorsey had all day to throw. Darrell Jones was a man on the end of it. I haven't given you the, uh, all of the officials tonight. Bud Elliott's a headlinesman. Rick Page, the line judge. Doug Foley is the alternate. Bill Beckett, the field judge. George Burton, the umpire. Watts Key is the side judge. And Virgil Valdez is the back judge. At breakfast with Watts Key yesterday, he says, hey, guys, be nice to us. We're out there working. <laughs> well, Courtney ought to be happy. It's snowing in North Carolina. He lives in a little Switzerland, and the Christmas trees are growing. Wide right. 
Wide right. 49 yards, though. That's man size, and it just slipped beyond the upright. And the score remains 34 to nothing. The Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T. This ABC Sports exclusive, brought to you by Ford, America's number one choice for 15 straight years. Warner Brothers' new motion picture, Collateral Damage, coming soon to theaters everywhere. Taco Bell, think outside the bun. And Tostito Scoops, the dip lover's chip. Dig in. Cornhuskers go to work first down. The ball on the 32-yard line. And they pitch it out to Diedrich. Diedrich cannot turn the corner. They have not really uh, turned the corner on Miami all night long with that pitch play. Vilma tracked him down and made the tackle. An offense that's averaged 37 points a game and has been very productive has been totally unproductive tonight. Punt, fumble, punt. The interception for a touchdown, punt, punt, downs, gave it up on downs, and the punt. I mean, they really have not been able to generate any offense whatsoever against this defense of Miami's. John Gibson, a senior from Papillon, Nebraska, wide out. He has not seen the ball at all tonight. They throw this one down the middle, short, going to the tight end, Wistrom, and he'll have a catch out at the 41 yard line. That's a yard short of the first down. Gibson, on the other hand, was running a fly and was starting to separate. But by then, the ball was gone to the middle. Keith, you think this is not impressive? 12 tackles for loss, two sacks, and no points. Wow. I'll tell you how much Nebraska passes when Tracy Wisdom, the tight end, is the all time receiving yards leader at Nebraska. That tells you something. It does. Third and one. And Diedrich slashing ahead. And he's on the 44 for a first down, and here's Swanee. Well, Keith, talking about the Miami defense, the defensive coordinator, Randy Shannon, is your architect. And he went back and asked a few friends, got a little bit of information on the option. But keep in mind, he also has a defensive secondary coach by the name of Mark Stoops. And I'm sure he called a few other people in Oklahoma and got the lowdown on the option. What he wanted to do today was penetrate, get upfield, and force Eric Crouch to belly to destroy the relationship on the pitch. And I say they have destroyed the relationship. I would indeed say so. Flags <clears throat> all over the place because you had uh, encroachment by the Miami defensive lineman. It would either be that or somebody moved on the other side, but it looked to me like they had encroached. Of course, his brothers, Mike and Bob Stoops, were here last year with the national championship. Offsides against the Canes. I don't mean in the Rose Bowl, but the national championship game. <laughs> The 29th Annual American Music Awards with Brooks and Dunn, Cher, Lenny Kravitz, Kid Rock, Shaggy, Britney Spears, and more, hosted by Jenny McCarthy and Sean P. Diddy Combs. Hmm? Wednesday at 8, 7 central on ABC. Did you say P. Diddy? I did. You know, you are hip. Well, first time. Right. <laughs> you are unbelievable. <laughs> uh, hmm. Back to the progressive farmer. <laughs> First and five after the offside. Crouch searching down the line, got a first down. Eric gets it down to about the 43. How about that, Keith? That's the old eye formation. Tom Nugent invented that. They come out with a full eye, run a little bit of option, fake the belly, and Crouch picks up the first. Boom, there's your read. Pull it out, follow your blocker, and get the first. Nicely done there. Mike Pilati said they should have run more option and I agree with him. They got away from their game plan a little bit early and they really had some success out there with Crouch. Steve Crewell threw a nice block that time in the 45. There's the Huskers. Here's another flag. Six minutes remaining in the third quarter. Miami is absolutely in control of the ball game, but the Huskers now are trying to pull themselves together and move the ball down ball the start. field. It'll be the and first the Nebraska penalty of the night. First down. It has been a strange bowl championship series. Point differential, 22.7 in all the games. Just blowouts. Yep. Poor Maryland Terrapins last night. Ralph Friedrich's done a marvelous job, but there was no question in the difference of speed in that game. 
I think it's fun though the two of the most dramatic coaching persona of the season uh, Friedgen and uh, Booker both in the 50s. I kind of enjoy that. I agree with you and quality guys. Well Larry Coker was hired from inside. Uh, Carl Selmer was hired, only other Miami coach I know of was hired from within the ranks of the coaching staff when the change was made at the top. And uh, he lasted a couple of years but Larry Coker uh, was the man that kept this ship sailing the seas. I will tell you this had they gone outside for a head coach when Butch left they wouldn't be here tonight. I agree. They would have to get used to a brand new system a brand new coach and they wouldn't have just kept that flow that they had and now they're ready to win 22 straight. Second down and 13 and this is Diedrich breaking it big. He's down to about the 16 yard line. James Lewis took his legs away. For the first time that looked like Nebraska. Offensive line did a nice job. Diedrich followed his blocking. The hole opened up and he exploded. Six feet, 225 pounds, good balance. Tough body, soft hands. He's a quality back, but he's been too quiet tonight. So it's first down. Ball at the 27-yard line. Miami was uh, offside that time, but no flag on it. That defensive end came across so fast. Here are the comments that the two coaches had to say to each other tonight, just before the game started. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? And uh, it's great that it, it uh, worked like this. Both of us worked our way up, and uh, we've had a little success. And hopefully, some of those other guys that uh, will get a chance. Huh? Maybe get a shot. Yeah, you never know. Huh? Oh, Congratulations. Thank okay. you. Now Frank knows about working your way up. 20, what, 26 years, wasn't it, before he finally got the call? Quality guy, first-class coach. Proud. Searching along the line. I wasn't anything there for him, but he made uh, three yard drive in anyway. Edward Reed made the tackle for Miami at 3.50 to go in the third quarter. Show you what they've done on the option tonight. They pitched it 19 times, kept it 19 times. He's trying to balance things out, but he's not getting the production out of his eye backs. You see what uh, the fullbacks have done no yards, and the tailbacks 58 yards, 15 carries. So they aren't getting the production that they had hoped for. A big chunk of that came on, a, on that play by Deep at the moment ago. But they're showing more formations now. They came out with ace, empty, eye formation. Ball drop. He's thrown down the middle to Thunder Collins, and Collins uh, hit when the ball arrived, and he couldn't put it away. And that'll bring up a fourth down. But I don't think there'll be any kick in here. You know I think we ought to give some credit to uh, Miami scout team or the wide receiver Roscoe Parrish. He played Eric Krauts as quarterback and gave him a pretty good picture and the defense has responded. I'm up. There's a look at wide receiver Roscoe Parrish. He's a scout teamer. He's the guy at practice that played quarterback and imitated Eric Krauts. Not as big but he's quick. Gave the defense fits. And they came into this ball game expecting quickness and they responded big. He's an MVP. And now Miami jumps up. McDougal jumped up at defensive end and called timeout. Now those scout teamers don't get enough credit, Keith. No, they don't. You got 319 to go in the third quarter, and you get beat up. Boy, I mean, <laughs> get hounded <laughs> by the big boys, but they're very valuable. Seven for Nebraska. The ball on the Miami 24 yard line. Miami defense hungering, I think, for a zero here. Almost got themselves offside. Ball is slapped up in the air. Now there's a penalty flag across the way. You know, you make a great point. Why did Miami take a timeout? McDougal, the defensive end, they do want that shutout. They saw a formation they weren't comfortable with. They knew it was a big fourth down. Take the timeout. They are going after a shutout, although they hurt themselves here by jumping off sides. On the defense. Five yards. Still fourth down. That'll drive a coach crazy. You call a timeout, you get in a defense that you think can stop them, and then when the play's carried out, you do stop them, only to have the penalty call. Yeah, 
It now becomes fourth down and two. Certainly. For you more makeable than seven. You want to anticipate the count, Keith. You want to get that quick jump. But you've got to watch the football. Trapp kept it. He's going to have his first down. He bellied it with the up guy and then uh, ran right in behind him. And he picks up the first down near the 16-yard line of Miami. He had those three fullbacks uh, lined up there, uh, Davies, Creeball, and Kessel. Aerial coverage provided by AT&T. First real threat by Nebraska. Haven't been down in the red zone tonight. Handed off inside. And touchdown. John Davis, the fullback. In 39 seconds of the third quarter, Nebraska gets on the scoreboard. What a fake by Crouch. Linebackers thought Crouch was going to have it. They went to the outside. They gave it inside to Davies. Bingo. He's a big, strong guy. 250 pounds as a fullback. He's going. And the kick is good. So it's now 34-7 Miami in command still, but at least the Cornhuskers have scored. In our AT&T flash flashback involves Nebraska's only previous Rose Bowl appearance, 1941 against Denver, and also their first bowl appearance of any kind. They took a 13-7 lead over Stanford on a 33-yard pass, Rorick to Zickman, but then Stanford quarterback Frankie Albert brought him back. 41 yard pass for Hugh Gallano and Stanford went on to win the football game 21 to 13. Pretty good film for back then. Well, you're in Hollywood. That's back lot stuff. See if Nebraska can do something defensively, get that ball back, get another score. Dave, let's uh, make it interesting. Dave Perry, uh, who's with us tonight up in the booth, uh, the head man of the rules business these days, who just commented that Herm Rorick went on to become a longtime outstanding official in the Big Ten Conference. You just saw there on that flashback from 1941. Josh Brown going to kick it off now, and Andre Johnson, Frank Gore will be waiting for it. Brown hits it. Ball sort of disappears against all that red in the Rose Bowl, and it's a fair catch call down around the 21 22 yard line by DJ Williams. Sunday night, Warren Sapp and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are getting kind of cranky, host Donovan McNabb and the Philadelphia Eagles at Sunday night football, 8 30 Eastern on ESPN. Pretty good year for the Eagles. Of course, you that, bet. that East was a little bit shaky this year with the Giants and Redskins. Yeah. That McNabb to clear. Donovan McNabb. 22 yard line. Haynes run it. Portis 25. Down he goes. Hit by Philip Bland. Keith, that defense right now for Nebraska has got to believe that they're still in this thing. They've got to make plays, stop a first down right here. Three and out. They've got to start believing they can get three and out. They've softened the corners and got them off. They know they were beating that entire first half by speed when they were pressing, when they were locked on. So they've dropped them back. Now we see Philip Bland come in there, the freshman 21, make that stop. They say he's the next Mike Brown, but we didn't see him in the first half. Dorsey. Brings it out. Ball dropped by Portis. That's two. Here comes third down. Third and seven. Bland, incidentally, is another youngster from California, Lafayette, California, who's gone to Nebraska. Rare to see Portis make a miss like that. Talked about his running ability, but he's a pretty good player. And this kid right here, we saw him last week. He's coming back from that broken ankle. We saw him in practice. He got in a couple fights. He's very aggressive. They love this guy. He's only a freshman. 
Dorsey. Pressure. Pass. Caught. Johnson. Andre Johnson continues to light him up. Finally tracked down by Dewan Gross. Well, you had the Nebraska fans on their feet. They wanted a three and out. They wanted the defensive stop, but they just cannot cover Andre Johnson. Working on Gross five. He goes, look at this, just outruns him again at speed. There's nothing complicated about that. Got some pretty good blocks out there, too, because Bland was following him across the middle and was just cut off. The thing that surprises me about Johnson, though, he's 6'3, 212 pounds. Miami Bowl record. What a night he's had. Andre mm -hmm. Johnson. Well, just across the 45, they'll run it for Portis. Maybe a yard. You know, we were talking about Andre Johnson before. We told, talked about him being a track guy, four by one, and the great speed he has. And we talked about not too many track guys become great receivers. We mentioned Bob Hayes and Willie Galt. This kid really is truly a receiver. Great technique. Gets off the line, uses his hands, knows how to separate. Yeah, but those two guys you're talking about were football players who ran track. I agree. And it looks to me like Johnson is. He is. Johnson is, too. Yep. Uh-oh. Dorsey lost his balance. They got a little tangled up and took away the momentum of the play. And there'll be a loss back inside the 45. Harriman Crump. Last Rose Bowl. The 88th Rose Bowl, chairman of the football committee. He's been here a long time, almost a half century. And what a delightful man he is. It's just a pleasure to be around him. And we've worked with him for so many years, as have all of our friends at NBC when they had the contract here. And I've never heard anybody say a bad word about that man. Third down, 11. Well, Nebraska's getting uh, a little cranky about things here. They handle Portis again on that play, but uh, you know the horse is at least in the, in the pasture. Well, where's that been? Had guys running to the football, had two or three guys around them. People were wrapping up and grabbing cloth. Well, we played three quarters. The Huskers have one left to get this thing respectable. ABC Sports coverage of the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. Back after this message and the word from our ABC station. Bowl presented by AT&T. On fourth and ten from the 46 to start the final quarter, Miami will punt. Capshaw waiting for it is Gross. Capshaw hits it high, not very long. There's a penalty flag on the field. The ball takes a Miami bounce. Is going to roll down to about the 12-yard line and roll dead. But let's see about the flag. Taking a while. But it looks to me like it's going to be a penalty of holding against Miami or some kind of penalty against uh, the Hurricanes. And Nebraska, of course, having no chance to return the punt, wants them to do it again. Holding on the kicking team. 10 yards. Previous spot. So that'll back them down. up, son, and that gets a little bit of a response from all the folks wearing the red shirts here tonight. Most of them stayed. I mean, they, they've traveled far. They're. Nebraska football fans do not leave her. And the Nebraska players starting to bounce around a little bit. Their body language before was terrible, but now they're starting to get, get excited here. Yep. Much better punt. A lot of more air under it, but it's returnable. And it is a gross. Gross. Oh, he's still got room and down the sidelines he goes. No flags behind him. It's touchdown. Boy, 
he got some blocks on the corner, then broke a great tackle. You sit him down, you bring Sweeney in, you give him a little attitude. He says, wait a minute, I can play this game. Kept his feet, good balance, and explode. Go on, go on, go on. good. It helped Keith that he took that punt on the run, had great momentum as he hit the wall. Look at him explode, then watch him break the tackle. Terrific balance here. Then he shows some speed. Nebraska's coming back. I've never seen one of those before. My goodness. It's Shuck, but it's not finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> 35-yard line. Oscars will kick it away to Miami. Johnson and Gore are waiting. Brown's kick is going to be into the end zone, two yards deep, and here comes Johnson. He has been a thorn in their side tonight, and he's out across the 20 to the 22. Monday night, join Al, Dennis, and Dan for the season finale of Monday Night Football. Former Hurricane linebacker Ray Lewis and the Ravens are primed for another postseason run. But first, they face Randy Moss and the Vikings. Vikings, Ravens, that's Monday night, live, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, here on ABC Sports. Of course, Ray Lewis, one of the great Hurricane linebackers, 1995 All-American, played for Randy Shannon. Randy Shannon was the, uh, the linebacker coach. Now he's the defensive coordinator and the Broyles award winner. You have many Lewises. You'll win that award as the best coach. Penalty flag as the play develops. And Portis taken off down the sidelines. It was thrown by the referee, and that's bad news, I think, for the Kane. Yep, coming back. You know, Keith, as we went to break, I said Nebraska coming back. And I felt funny saying that because it's 34 to 14, but they scored 14 straight points. Now you're bringing Miami back here. If this defense can get three and out, who knows? At least I think we're hoping. Well, there are certainly a lot of folks wearing red jackets around offense. here feel the same Two way about it. Yeah, I agree. They've suddenly come alive. You just set. don't want to see a blowout in a championship game, the and so far this has been all Miami blowout. The penalty brings the ball back to the 16-yard line. Well, that's pretty telling, isn't it? Nine for Miami, only one for Nebraska. Dorsey pumps it a little bit. Now he's going to throw underneath. And look at him. I'm telling you, this fella came hard. Oh, got to get out. And there's another penalty flag. And he's thrown about the 15 yard line. But I think this one might go against the Cornhuskers. Yeah, I think it's a face mask. Well, Des Moines yards. Adams, number 98, face there mask. walking. That's what it is. On the defensive team. Is the rush in who's been line. battling Bryant McKinney all night. Boy, oh, he's entitled to. A few moments of walking slow. Yeah, Deion Booker, watch this now. Here comes Kelsey. Here's Portis underneath. Then as they come in, whoop. Actually, it was Craver. Craver. You know, but Keith, there's another situation where the defense was in position. They were ready to make the play. It would have been a play for a nominal gain, yep. if probably a loss, yep. but they overran the play. Yep. Talked about the quarterbacks at the top of the game. Heisman Trophy winner, Maxwell Award winner. How about this? 18 for 30, 334 yards, three touchdowns. Eric Crouch, of course, he's trying to get all his on the ground. 66 rushing yards. Opposites in a lot of ways, we told you. A passer and a runner. Tonight, it's Ken Dorsey. Well, he's got 334 yards, and uh, that's here's the chain out for this one. And uh, the record was 321 yards, George Myra, but it was against Nebraska. He was in that 1962 Gotham Bowl. Keith, so far in the bowl championship series, obviously speed has been the difference in every game. Yep. But quarterbacks that can throw have certainly made the difference as well. We saw Joey Harrington. We saw Grossman last night. We see Ken Dorsey here today. Yep. down a short yard. Gore is the tailback. They hand it up front to McGay. And McGay loses the ball and it's rolling and it's recovered by Miami. 
It was lucky too. He he put it on the ground and like a basketball bounced right back up into his chest. And they move the chains because it's a first down. Watch this and watch how the ball comes out. Now watch. Hits the ground and catches a pretty good bounce right back up to him. I thought it hit him in the chest, hit him down on the knee, but fortunately it came back up to him. The first and ten right there. There's your guy, Johnson. At the 36. Nebraska bouncing around on defense. And Craver comes up now, softens back up in that corner. Dorsey changing his play, turns and gives the ball to Gore, Frank Gore. Gore takes a pretty good lick from Chris Kelsey. Now, two things are in play here. You're seeing more runs out of Miami because they want to melt the clock, shorten the game, and get out of here. But you also see Nebraska's defense starting to bounce around and playing a lot better. You got a cane who's shaken up. That's Ed Wilkins, who's uh, getting a little medical help over there. The big left guard plays alongside McKinney. That's their protective side as they guard the blind side of their quarterback. The game summary looks like this. But you can see it remains dominant for Miami. Time remaining in the game, 13-13. Presented by AT&T. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by AT&T Long Distance. Nothing else has the power of your voice. Chrysler. Drive equals love. FedEx. Ground International Online or Express. Don't worry, there's a FedEx for that. And Touchstone Pictures, The Count of Monte Cristo. Coming to theaters near you. Wilkins goes out, but instead of bringing Kerry in to replace him, they move Romberg the center over and bring a new center in, Rodriguez. You hate to switch centers in the middle of the game. Well, that didn't bother Dorsey any. He just stands up and pops the ball right into his big old tight end, Jeremy Shockey, and uh, he's close to another. Oh, no, he's not. He's got a good five yards left. Here's a snap, no problem. You're right. The Wilkins, battery. Wilkins comes back now, and Rodriguez comes up. Battery didn't make any difference. No. Now Ron Burke goes back to center. 34-14, you score. Miami, they've led all the way and been pretty much dominant all the way. It is now third and six. Black shirts trying to hold here. They get a little heat on Dorsey. The pass is thrown away to the sidelines. Pass is caught again. I'll give you one guess who caught it. Yeah, exactly. Johnson. You oh, know, there is. He lit their tree tonight. And, and everything about that play is so frustrating for Nebraska. They came with a blitz. They tried to get pressure. They could not get to Dorsey. Dorsey just kind of skates over that way, throws a strike. And there, once again, is your separation. Johnson working Dewan Gross. That's now 199 yards for Andre Johnson. The Rose Bowl record is 216. And Keyshawn Johnson set that on you the coaching. Here's Portis running to the outside. And to make something out of it. He got four yards. Capital One, first and ten, brought to you tonight. Capital One. The Miami record for receiving yards is set by Eddie Brown, 220 yards. That's back in 1984 against uh, Boston College. You know, Keith, when this game began, we talked about Ken Dorsey and how he reads game plans voraciously, study videotape day and night, really prepares tremendously. Well, Keo Craver just went out dragging his arm. Yeah. Let's see if they pick on that corner now. Pate Jordan, uh, uh, Jarrett Jordan is in. Uh, Jarrett Payton is in for uh, Miami. And this is Portis. Oh, he's a skater, isn't he? Those feet are right on the ground. He's slipping and sliding. He's moving. He's, he, he gives you a little leg and takes away. And he's really a good-looking runner. He really is, and he's not very tall. The thing is, he's 5'10 and a half. 
almost a hide and seek runner. You know, he, he hides behind those great big offensive linemen, seeks that hole. Once he sees it, explodes. But the other thing about him is he's got that great low center of gravity, and he gets so many yards after contact. That time they just took his feet away finally. He's had a good night. 99 yards. Doors back in. Portis is a junior. Ball is bellied off to the left side, then thrown by Dorsey, complete to Williams. And Williams picks up uh, five or six yards. It is a new year and a new season. But it is still the same bad attitude. Dennis Leary is back. The job starting Wednesday, January 16 at 9.30, 8.30 Central on ABC. Second down and six now for the Canes as they're just dinking and dunking it right on down the road. Dinking it and dunking it, but also melting that clock. And eating it up. That's right. You've got 10.40 to play in the game, and timeout is called by Miami. After the game, tonight's winner receives the Sears National Championship Trophy. An imposing thing it is. Ken Dorsey, the passing quarterback, 21 of 33, 360 yards and three touchdowns. Told you in the Bowl Championship Series, the passers have been dominant. And speed has won every one of those games. The ball rests right now on the 22-yard line of Nebraska. It is second down and six for the Miami Hurricanes, and time remaining in the game is 10-4. It. Didn't have control. It slipped out of his hand. It's been a phenomenal performance tonight by Miami. And they will be the one and only champion this year. But what a job by Larry Coker. You know, this, this Miami team, you can say anything you want about Miami's reputation in the past, but this Miami team is just flat out balling tonight. And they're behaving themselves. Not a lot of snapping the collars and trash talking. They're just playing football. And they're winning a championship for that guy right there. Ball thrown quickly, caught quickly, and hit quickly. Keo Craver pounding Kevin Beard. And that'll bring up your fourth down. That's a big stop. Now you set up the field goal. They missed it the last time they attempted a field goal. Well, this one's an all that big. No, 37 yards. He got a big leg. And he's five for six from this range. Plenty of distance, and he got it. And so that makes it a 37 to 14 ball game and 10 04 to play. Todd Sievers has three. Back inside the Rose Bowl, Tim Brant and Keith Jackson with you. And folks, everybody knows college football and Keith Jackson are synonymous. Wait a minute. He's a legend, a luminary, a <laughs> Hall of Famer. And folks, let me tell you, I've got the greatest job in the world sitting next to him. And I want to tell you that Keith Jackson will be back again next year, 2002, to do college football on ABC. And partner, I am thrilled. Me too. You're the greatest. <laughs> Glad to live long enough to do it one more time. We'll get you all squared away, get you back in this booth. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, look at this. Another big return, uh, Josh Davis. So Tony jumping up and down. I'll bet you over that one as Josh fumbled the first one, but he's turned in two fine runs since that time. You know, when they start talking about legends, that just means you're not very far from becoming an ancestor. You know that. <laughs> well, and I know there's not a whole lot to celebrate after retirement. There's only one more big event. You ain't ready for that, partner. <laughs> oh, that's great. Been a great crew to work with. Uh, this is, we've had a lot of fun. I know Howard Katz has been smiling for the last day and a half. Uh, oh, he's, he's as good as I want to know. That's a penalty flag. That's illegal motion. Illegal motion. Yep. Moving again. Well, they're tired now. Kind of worn down. Almost 
perhaps even a little desperate to get something more to satisfy their own personal pride. You mentioned what Larry Coker will accomplish today in his first year 12 and 0 national championship. Howard Schnellenberger got Miami going in the early 80s. He won the national title in 83. Had Jimmy Johnson put Miami in the elite national level. He won a couple. Dennis Erickson won two more rings 89 and 91. Butch Davis came in and he really cleaned things up. Butch Davis did. He needs a lot of credit too. And he stopped UCLA's 20 game win streak and then bring in uh, bring in Larry and congratulations to Larry Coker. That's a tremendous feat. And Miami is uh, it's a class act right now. It's first and 15 now as Crouch gets around the corner. Eric Crouch showing his foot speed. He's been pounded on all night. But here with 9.27 to go in the fourth quarter, he got to the corner and he turned it on. That Heisman Trophy was not a gift. He's a fighter. He's a quality quarterback. He can throw, but he loves to run. And you see his lanes right here. He's taking them. 37 yards on the play. Great Drops close the shoulder speed. and pounds at him himself. Sure, great closing speed by Reed again. He's the guy that got over, had a pursuit angle. But again, Crouch is fighting, scratching, and clawing, even though he's down 37 to 14. Ball's on the 30-yard line for the first down. It's back to Diedrich, and they're going to eat him up. We saw him work that play in practice. They were going to have Diedrich throw it to the fullback, Judd Davies. Never had a chance. No, he didn't have a chance to throw it, but Davies was open downfield. That's the 13th tackle for loss. Here's the pitch. Watch number four. Can you see him explode? Right now, he's got the step, and he says, I'm even, and I'm leaving. But because of the pressure, he doesn't have a chance to get the ball out there. But again, that was Reed. He could have been just baiting him. That's a big loss. Nine yards. Second down and 19. There goes Crouch again. And he's back to the original line of scrimmage. A nine-yard pickup. James Lewis the tackle. Keith, I know you like Eric Crouch a lot. Not only as a football player, but as a person. What about at the next level? Wide out. Yeah, I agree. He, he, they want to keep him on offense because he knows the game so well offensively. Well, he's got plenty of speed. He, he reminds me a little bit of Ed McCaffrey. He's not quite as big as Ed, but uh, uh, he's got enough speed. He may even be a little faster well, than Ed McCaffrey. And he's so athletic. And we yep. saw Drew Bennett, the quarterback from UCLA. UCLA. Yep. He's doing great down at Tennessee yep. as a wide receiver. It is now third down and 11, and uh, there's trouble. Penalty flags on the play. Eric stopped. It's almost as, as if he knew Miami Holy had defense. jumped and he stopped. Five yard penalty. Repeat third down. Eric's probably happy so he can get his breath back. <laughs> That'll make this third down a little bit easier for him. Third and six now. 37 to 14. Oregon won easily. Florida won easily. So far, Miami has been easy. They jumped again. Take yeah. down behind the line of scrimmage, but the lines one on this side is not having it. And, uh, I don't know that the flag came from the other side, but the man over here threw it. Looked like uh, Miami jumped again, so the clock is not moving very much, and they're gaining Off yardage. Side. It is offsides against Miami. Down, 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 down. Now, looking a little gimpy. Well, he didn't get as much help tonight as I think Nebraska had anticipated. Darren Diekert has that pulled calf muscle. Collins has just a, a little bit weak from the flu he's had this past week, so Eric Crouch has had to do a lot of it by himself. That penalty makes it third and one at the 21. And Diekert has the first down. You know who's been a tough guy in that uh, on that defensive side of the ball for Miami tonight is that Mike Rump. He's been around that ball all night long. Number eight. 
You know what's amazing, Keith? This defense has had 12 guys with interceptions this year, and Rumpf is not one of them. He has not gotten an interception this year. Nope, he's the only one. This guy, <laughs> every time you throw the ball out there, you hold your breath. This is Crouch coming to this side. Pitches back to Diedrich. Dropped the ball. And Crouch covered it. Talk about Rumpf and his ability. He played this play perfectly. Got in between Crouch and the pitch man. He got a hand on it, I believe. Yes, he did. Watch number eight now. Here comes Crouch. He's reading. Here's Rumpf in between the pitch man and Diedrich. Did get a hand on it. They're lucky to get it back. Ball is on the 19 yard line, second down and 10. But he's going to keep it. And the number 51, Jonathan Vilma, the linebacker, tracked him down. He's quick. Vilma, sophomore out of Coral Gables. Nebraska averages 37 points a game. They have 14 on the board. That's it. And their other score was on a punt return, so the defense is only allowed seven. Diedrich got some room. Oh, oh boy. there's a hit. Vilma, number 51. There is the leading tackler on this defense. Folks, if you have a tape, a film, where you want to show how to tackle, this is it. Take him inside out, inside out, read him, read him, tuck your tail, sky your eyes, and boom! Put him on his back. Perfect. Hat to hat. All your power comes for your legs when you're tackling. And explode through those legs, and he did. Fourth and six. Thunder Collins is the deep back. And uh, that's Nebraska's last timeout. It comes at 4.32 to play in the ball game. You're watching ABC's coverage of the national championship. The Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. Coaches of championships at Miami, Howard Schnellenberger. Jimmy Johnson twice and Dennis Erickson and now Larry Coker with 432 to play in the game but his team leads 37 to 14 he's learned from those other guys too. Larry Coker has he said he got his offense from the Dallas Cowboys Butch Davis brought it in Jimmy Johnson helped refine it he took it to the next level Fourth and six for the Cornhuskers. And they try the middle. And they don't get it. Boy, that surprises me. I mean, that, that is so typical of the way this night has gone. But why you would not throw there on fourth and long. Mm. What did Dandy Don used to say? Turn out the lights. The party's over. Here are the FedEx ground stats. Miami 107 rushing yards tonight. Nebraska 187. And the FedEx air stats, there is the difference. 362 yards for Dorsey and the Miami Hurricanes. Don't forget the three turnovers at the top of the game that put Miami up in a hurry. Penalty flag thrown. The attendance in the ball game tonight is 93,781. That is the largest crowd the Nebraska Cornhuskers have ever played before. When they were here at the Rose Bowl in 1941, they had 91,000 against Stanford. But tonight, 93,781. And I would say 60% of it, maybe more, 
are Nebraska. I would certainly agree with that. And those turnovers you talked about, this place was rocking and rolling and extremely loud. When those turnovers took place, it's been quiet ever since. Repeat first down. So the Canes get their tenth penalty of the ball game. And the clock will start rolling now at 410 to play in the game. From the 10. First and 15. Huskers almost jump. Horse has given him a long count trying to tease him. Hands the ball to Portis. And he's up across the 15 to the 16. The Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company providing the aerial views tonight at the Rose Bowl. On the wings of Goodyear, the pilot, Charles Russell, and the cameraman, Fabian Ochoa. Clinton Portis over 100 yards now. That's his ninth 100 yard game of the year. Averages 109 yards per game, and he's right at 104. This is the first time that Miami has ever played in a Rose Bowl game. They played in this stadium six years ago. They came out and played UCLA. Bruins beat them up. And Miami returned to favor the next year down there in one of the most unusual, remarkable football games I think I've ever seen. Well, and remember, that was a makeup game yep. from the hurricane, hurricane early in the yep. season. Yep. And it stopped not only the 20 game win streak of UCLA, but took them out of the national championship picture. Another little trivia note here that uh, this is the first time in 55 years that Big Ten Pac-10 teams have not played in the Rose Bowl. The last team to play here other than Big Ten Pac-10 was 1946 when Alabama Frank Thomas's babies. They didn't even have razors. They beat the USC 34-14 in the year following the Big Bowl. And of course you remember the one year the Rose Bowl was not played here in Duke. Pasadena yep. played out at Duke. Yep. So now they've spread all the spoils around, haven't they, in the BCS? Well, they sure have. And you know all those critics that have been yelling and screaming about what a sham the BCS is? There's no question in my mind, Miami is the one and only national champion this year. And you've had now the SEC, the ACC, the Big 12, and now the Big East. So four years, four different conferences. And we're just playing this one out. Miami will now punt it away, and Nebraska will get good field position. If the Cornhuskers uh, should perhaps score, then uh, no big thing. Ah, kick. Good carry on it. Back to the 40-yard line. This is Gross. He's had one big one tonight. This time they get him at about the 48-yard line. Get ready to bond. ABC style, a great Bond movie every Saturday night. The James Bond Picture Show premieres Saturday, January 26th at 8, 7 central here on ABC. They're sneaking around and sneaking around. They're trying to get the bucket and uh, dump it all over Larry. Well, I'll tell you this, partner. Here they come. It's going to be cold too because it's yeah, a chilly night in Pasadena. Brought, I hope you sent some uh, clothes with him because uh, it's uh, it's a long drive back to Century City. It's hot and wet. Oh, that's cold. Uh, Look at his face. Guarantee you, it will take your breath away. Those kids really like this man. They really do. There's nothing not to like about him. Well, that's right. <laughs> Reverse action and get something out of it. Oh, oh. Now the ball comes out. It's Vilma again with another fierce tackle. Those are two of the most incredible tackles you'll see in football. And I told you they aren't trash talking or popping collars. But I don't blame him for getting excited on this. And I, and, and I, you know, you got a player hurt, you don't want to say too much, but this is a picture perfect tackle. You dream of hits like that when you're a defender. Ben Zajek is the uh, man injured on the play. When you hit a golf ball perfectly, it's a little click. When you make a tackle like that perfectly, it feels like a click. You barely feel it. For you, maybe. How about the fellow fielding it? Guarantee you he feels it. And he's still down, and you don't want to make light of this. But I know as a 
as a defender you dream of shots like that you take it inside out tuck that tail sky the eyes and try to drive through him and he came right under his chin. Another man that uh, I enjoyed seeing on this trip was Turner Gill. Turner is now in his 10th season as the quarterback coach at Nebraska. He was the quarterback in 81-82-83 uh, when they had that 31-30 game when Tom Osborne went two to win and didn't get Miami. Wound up winning at 31-30. Turner went off, played two years in the CFL, played some minor league baseball, and then in 1990 he came on the staff as a graduate assistant. Quality guy there too. He'll be a head coach. Oh, I think so. But the uh, the stability of the coaching staff at Nebraska has been part of their history. Uh, George Darlington is now in his 29th. He's a senior man, and but uh, Milt Teneper, Milt's got 28 years. Don Young's at 19. Ron Brown 15, and Craig Bold been there seven, the defensive coordinator, and Turner 10 years. But um, Penn State and uh, Nebraska were remarkable for so many years because their coaches just never left. They just stayed there. And, and you know, winner after winner after winner. That's an excellent point, Keith. And because of the way this game has gone, we haven't had an opportunity really to talk about the Nebraska coaches as much as we would like. But Frank Solich obviously stepped in for a legend in Tom Osborne. He's done a marvelous job. Still looking for that national championship, but uh, Frank Solich is a quality guy as well. Runs so a very is, good program. Uh, is uh, walked off the field, so it looks like he's going to be okay. Nebraska's won the second half. They, they, they lead Miami 14 to 3 in this half. The unfortunate thing was they were trailing 34 to nothing at the half. Yeah, that's right. The ball is thrown to the sidelines, and it is. Uh, that's an incredible catch. It is. He was sliding down, sliding backwards, and it was Wilson Thomas who made the catch. You know, Wilson Thomas is going to fly from here to Missouri to join the basketball team for Saturday's game. Well, the basketball uh, program at Miami is rolling right along. Uh, Perry Clark won his 14th consecutive game last night, beating Georgetown. So everything's rolling downhill at Miami right now. Perry Clark's from my neighborhood. The well, we're watching the final moments of the ball game, and we are looking at 38 seconds. I want to give you the names of the people involved in this telecast tonight. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz. Director of production is Bob Toms. Uh, coordinating producer is Bob Grit Goodrich. Uh, Good is here tonight. Producer. For us, this entire season has been Mark Loomis, our director Patrick McManus, our technical director John Zippe, associate producer Derek Mobley, and uh, Fred King, associate director Jeff Kibler, assistant to the producer Ross Malloy, Kurt Thomas, Dave Fowler, Tom Wicks, computer stats Anthony Holman, Matt Jenkins, our spotter for the season Kelly Hayes, our statistician Forever Barcometto, our production manager Joe Alvarado and Megan Murray. Our technical manager Dennis Zabo, Phil Parlante, and uh, they're, they're wonderful people to work with. That's, that's all I can say to you. They're about as good as I have ever known. There is not a better crew in television, and I would think that's part of the reason that you want to come back next year is to be with this group. They're great. You're right. Ken Dorsey. Quite a night. Bigger night for that man. The only reason it's bigger for that man, he's 53 years old, and he's waited his opportunity. He got it, and he made the most of it. Partner, it's been a great year, and again, my privilege to sit next to you. You are the greatest. Well, I appreciate it, Timmy. Uh, certainly, we've what 28 years or something like that. We've been doing this. And, Joined uh, at the hip. <laughs> Todd Harris, of course, who's patrolled the sidelines for us in the good and the bad weather, and the highs and the lows of the season. And Todd, uh, you be careful running around the world now and doing all those exotic programs that you're involved in. Just behave yourself. Uh, this is close to the final numbers and again Dorsey with a spectacular night 22 of 35 362 yards against Nebraska three touchdown passes and again I, Nebraska's defense has to be a little bit shell shocked having uh, given up all those points to Colorado and 34 in the first half here to Miami much better in the second half. Well Miami has erased all doubts about the national champion. They are clearly unequivocally and without doubt the national champions of college football in the year 2001 and the Rose Bowl game being played on January 3rd of 2002. Remarkable performance tonight against a gritty Nebraska bunch. We salute the people of Nebraska the thousands of them who came and the twenty five thousand who came from Miami. 
because they said the Canes don't travel people. Well, that's not so. They do. And who wouldn't travel to watch a football team of that quality play? Eric Crouch is now finished as a collegian. He won the Heisman Trophy, the highest award that I guess you can give to a college football player. He played his heart out tonight. Yes, he did. Didn't have a whole lot of help, to be blunt about it. And now Ken Dorsey with uh, time about gone at uh, 15 seconds showing on the clock, looking to the sidelines and say, what do you want me to do? <laughs> and what we want you to do is snap the ball <laughs> and end it. Please can't end it. He's got to have some people out there. There was only got six men on the field. And he said, help. He'll snap it if they'll give him somebody to keep Well, everybody started killed. celebrating, and he didn't have enough guys. I, I still don't <laughs> think he has 11. Well, it, I don't think he does either. But he's probably got enough to survive it. Yeah, here comes somebody else. You want those big uglies out there. You leave those little skinny wideouts on the sidelines. Give me those big guys. <laughs> <laughs> big old Ed Wilkins was over here celebrating. <laughs> uh, well, I hope to have a good party, and I hope to have a good trip home, and I hope the people in Miami turn out and welcome them home because they, they are certainly the champions. Two great programs, one champion, the Miami Hurricanes. And so it is. The season of 2001 and the championship game of 2002 is done in the books with a final score. We over on the side of Miami, 37 to 14. But it's been a festive time, and in those moments before this game started tonight, it really was special to see all this red and all this orange and green filling the grand old arena they call the Rose Bowl. The trophy presentation is upcoming. We'll have the MVPs announced and the national championship trophy presented from Sears. And again, we say goodbye to our old friend Harriman Cronk. This was his last game as the chairman of the football committee. The Tournament of Roses. Jack French retired a year ago. Mitch Dorga has taken over as the CEO. Well, this was a festive night. I mean, from the get-go, with the F-16 fighters flying overhead and the national anthem and the, the game itself. Just wish it had been a better game. Now let's join Todd Harris on the field. Thank you, Keith Wall. He's a class act. Coach, thanks for taking time to spend with us. First of all, your team, you got in such a big hole so early, it was just hard to come back. Well, we played a great football team in Miami, and they were on top of their game. And then we helped them with uh, turnovers in the first half. And you're right, we got in such a big hole. It was very difficult. Really proud of our kids in the second half, the way they battled back. Uh, but Miami's a great football team and certainly deserving of, uh, of having the kind of year that they've had undefeated and, and uh, ranked at the top of the polls. All right, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Classy man. Here's our built Ford Tough play of the game. Made by James Lewis. Ricochet into Lewis's hand, picks it off, takes it 47 yards for a touchdown. That made it 21 to nothing, and the river was flowing at that point for the Hurricanes of Miami. Certainly a game changer, and the defense was tough all night, using their speed, great game plan to come in and fight Nebraska. It was all Miami. 37 to 14 is your final score. We're waiting for the trophy presentations and we'll be talking with Larry Coker in Swanville. Well, how did they get here? Miami, two close calls, Boston College and Virginia Tech. Undefeated regular season. Tonight played a brilliant football game and they will be going home national champions. And that picture will hang on the walls long time and well deserved it's a talented football team that could have, I think beaten anybody tonight no way anybody I'm telling you yes anybody any <laughs> collegiate 
They couldn't have beaten the Raiders, but they would have been a ball game. No, they've got tremendous speed. There's no question about that. You know, right from the get-go, we talked about the two cornerbacks for Nebraska, how they were going to try to press and lock on, and they were going to take some chances, something teams haven't been able to do. This one wasn't either. No. They ate them up with speed. Foot speed. You, yeah. it's, it's, there's not, no substitute. Oh, absolutely not. Speaking of speed, here's a guy that had some speed. Lynn Swan, he's now ready with the trophy presentation and all the ceremonies down on the field. Keith Jackson, thank you very much. I, I don't know if you ever get totally ready for a trophy ceremony. Everybody wants to be up here, but we would like to thank the chairman and CEO of AT&T, Michael Armstrong. It's been a great ball game. And now we would like to have the president of the Tournament of the Roses make the presentation of the Rose Bowl trophy. The president is Ron Oakham. Ron? Larry, congratulations to you in Miami for winning the national championship in the Rose Bowl. Now, I'm just going to slide down the table just for one moment because we have co-MVPs of this Rose Bowl game. The co-MVPs, quarterback number 11, Ken Dorsey, and his primary target, his primary target, Andre Johnson. Congratulations to both of you. Okay? And, and now, we want to make the presentation that everyone's really been waiting for. This is the Sears National Championship Trophy. Here representing Sears, the Senior Vice President, David Selby, and Coach, here it is, your moment. Coach Coker, on behalf of all of us at Sears and the American Football Coaches Association, it's my pleasure to present the Sears National Championship football trophy to you, your team, and the Hurricane fans everywhere. Congratulations on a perfect season, an outstanding performance here tonight, and all the best in winning your very first Sears trophy. Congratulations. Please pick up the ball. All the best. You might just want to hold on to that while we talk. It might be a little bit safer. You came in with a perfect record. It was not easy, a couple of close calls, but you dominated the first half of this game. Talent, speed, character. What's most important in this ball game? No doubt about it, uh, Lynn. It's character. We talked about talent all along, but uh, the, the thing is that sets this team apart. We have great character. They refuse to give in, refuse to flinch. They've done what they've had to do week in and week out. They've gotten the job done. It's just a tremendous group of young athletes and some tremendous coaches. We don't want you to get off the stage without giving you your credit for leading this ball club. This was a two-year journey, a two-year journey for this team, 22 consecutive wins for you, Larry Coker. What was the key? What did you have to do to make that happen for this team? Well, I think consistency is a big thing, uh, Lynn. You have to play week in and week out. You have to get some breaks along the way. But, but our players were very well prepared. Our coaches did a tremendous job with them. And just, uh, just the week in, week in and week out consistently. I'm so proud of this team, so proud of this coaching staff. Well, Coach, you're talking about consistency. I'm going to go to your quarterback over here, Ken Dorsey. You've been so outstanding this year. You said... It didn't matter whether he had to hand the ball off every play or throw it every play. The most important thing to you was the team, and the team functioned well this afternoon. It, it, it was great. Um, you know, the entire team deserves to be MVPs tonight because our defense really stepped up to a challenge, and they did a great job. Our offensive line, our receivers, everybody played an amazing game, and we had to against a great opponent. Andre, step right over here. It seemed, Andre, that you were a man among boys. Anything you wanted to do this evening, you got it done. Well, before the season, uh, the receivers were overlooked. And uh, the day I came out, I felt like I had something to prove. So I just came out here and brought my A game. But... All my teammates, man, they came to play. They brought the A game and all them my MVPs. Congratulations to the both of you. And that sounding team, Coach, again, congratulations to you and the entire Miami program. We'll go right now to our studio host, John Saunders. John, take it away. John, take it away. 
Yeah. All right, Swanee, alongside Terry Bowden, as we put a cap on this season. The Miami Hurricanes started this season knowing that they'd been nosed out of reaching the championship game. Larry Coker had this team focused from day one, and the character was there. John, John, we talked about what a wonderful job Larry Coker did before the game, but credit needs to go to their, these players. They were told they were the best team in the country before the season, that they had the most talent. They could have rested on their laurels. But they're the only team in America that came to work every Saturday and won every game. Then they came to the bowl and they turned it up a notch. They even focused more. They have special chemistry. They're a special group. And it's groups like that that win national championships. And very quickly, Eric Crouch got the Heisman Trophy. But Ken Dorsey will be back next year. He's already said that. Will not come out to the NFL. Is there any reason to believe Miami could not be back again? John, four different coaches have won national championships at Miami because of talent like Ken Dorsey. You're exactly right. And the thing that stands out most for me this year is in a season with so much tragedy where the games could have meant so little, they could not have meant more. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Keyword, ABC Sports. Except on the West Coast. Stay tuned for Nightline after your late news. Tonight, they'll cover the story of the U.S. Navy search for Osama bin Laden on the high seas. For Keith Jackson, Tim Brandt, Lynn Swan, Todd Harris, and Terry Bowden, I'm John Saunders. See you again next year. Congratulations to the Hurricanes. of excellence.